right, you guys, welcome back to the Miss Titus 2 show. As you can see, I have a special guest with me. Um, I call him Brother Joseph, but really, y'all can call him Brother P because that's his YouTube channel. Um, but Brother P, what's going on? How you doing? I'm doing great. And yourself? I'm doing good. I'm so excited to have you on tonight. Um, I invited him on not just because he's a member or a former Hi, member. Uh of Omega Sci-Fi. Sorry, guys, I had something else open there. I invite him on because he's a former member of Omega Sci-Fi. He's, he's got some head knowledge on Freemasonry, specifically Prince Hall Freemasonry, and also because he's a great storyteller, and I like to hear stories, and I thought you guys might want to hear some of his um, experiences with Greek life and what he knows about Freemasonry and all that. So, so Brother P, would you like to introduce yourself for people who uh, may not be familiar with you? Yes. Um, my name, I go by the name of Brother P. My middle name is Philip. Um, my former rap name was Philly Phil, and that's where the, the, I had to change that once I stopped smoking Philly Blunts. And then I became an artist formerly known as Philly Phil, and then I changed it to Brother P because I didn't want to go by any titles that they were telling me that I was. That I was. So I said, I know to all the brothers and sisters in the faith, I'm your brother. So that's how Brother P came about. And as, and as an artist, there were several other Brother P's. So that's when I just said, I'm going to go with my government name. And I'm just, I'm Joseph Telefero. So AKA Brother P. Joseph Telefero, AKA Brother P. And that's me. And I love Jesus. Amen. I love Jesus too. Hence why I'm wearing him on my shirt tonight. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, James Booker already coming in with the super chat. Thanks, bro. Hello. And right back at you. I think we're going to have some fun because from what I can see off of Brother P's channel, he's been in this um, Greek life game for a minute. He's been out of it for a minute, but he was also in it for a minute too. So what fraternity, you know, we kind of already know from the thumbnail, what fraternity were you in and how long were you in it? I was in three fraternities, Persian Rifles, 151 Band and Choir Fraternity, and then I pledged Omega Psi. I tried to pledge my whole time in college. Then I finally went over after six real attempts of getting in, going through hell, and finally crossing the burning sands in spring 92 Alpha Alpha chapter of Omega Psi Alpha Fraternity. Six attempts. Why did it take that long? Like, was it um, because you, you decided to, to not do it anymore or they didn't? No, I went all the way to the hill every time. The The first attempt was spring 86. I didn't have the grades. Mm -hmm. The The second attempt, I did have the grades and I didn't make line. The third attempt, I made line spring 88 and I was online. But then they dropped the campus, dropped the whole fraternity from the campus. So we was about to come out on the yard. It was over. Um, 89, I went all the way to the end, but they, they dropped the line again. So we didn't have cues at or lines at Hampton, 88 and 89. Then I went online in California in the 12th district. This is when membership intake came in. And the bossless came in when me and my line brother was online. And he said, there's a new process. You're not going to be able to pledge like they used to. So he let us go in the back room to ourselves and see if we wanted to do it. And I said, me and this guy, he was from North Carolina A&T, a &T, and I was from Hampton, HBCU. So we looked at each other. I said, I can't do it. He's telling us to basically say, become paper. I said, I can't do that and go back home. And my man, his, um, he was like the same Harold. He was like, I can't do that either. So we went and told the boss, we can't do it. So we was so brainwashed. We turned down joining the fraternity the legal way and they probably would have pledged us afterwards anyway but we we won't hearing it and um and then I, I moved back to go to graduate school got a job and then I, I finally went over I was on the first membership intake lines maybe in America but definitely in the third district um and I went over with three other chapters um Kappa Iota Iota and Zeta Omicron 10 of us went over and that was the first membership intake line and and that's when the fraternities went to chaos because of that program of of just not just reading you in but it was no hazing mm -hmm. now that, that the underground haze but I'm saying officially pledge clubs was over so and that's that's my history with it so to clarify, you were or were not hazed when you the, the last time when you actually made it. Yeah, I was hazed all every time I pledged, I was hazed. And and what happened at the end is that the line that I was on, I told them, 
because the technicality of membership intake came in again when I was online in 91. So about that time, I was basically grown. I, I understood the process. I knew what it was, but I was a man now. I wasn't 19 no more. 19 year olds do whatever the big brothers tell them to do. Now I'm looking at this thing. I understand. And you wasn't just going to do. So I wrote a letter to the, this chapter and told them nobody will ever touch me again until I become a member of Omega Sci-Fi. Mm, gotcha. So, you you know, this is something I didn't have the ability to do when I was um, 18 and 19 online because I just, you know, you're new to the whole school system and we think this is just how it is and you just take it. But as you get wiser and you get tired of being abused like that, you, you feel a man, you're going to stand up. So I was just like, nah, y'all ain't, I'm going to pledge, but I'm going to be this membership intake process. I'm going to do it legally. So I became paper along with my LBs. And then we went online afterwards for six weeks. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. So like, do you have any, uh, I don't want to say horror stories, but like, can you tell us maybe something pretty traumatic that happened? Yeah. If anything traumatic happened to you? Yeah, it was totally traumatic because, you know, basically it's a brainwashing thing. The underground is different. The official stance of the fraternities is they're non hazing organizations. This is true. But the underground exists. There's two fraternities in every organization. There's a the legal fraternity, which every body who's claiming they're following Jesus Christ should be, if they're in it, they should be with the legal process and not no part of this underground process. The underground process is based purely on lying. You got to lie to the fraternity, lie to your parents. You got to lie to everybody around you because nobody can know what you're doing. And it's a continual lying thing. And the word says, thou shalt not lie. So you are totally um, sinning without repenting. So if you claim in you in Christ, now me, I wasn't in Christ. So lying wasn't nothing. So I'm getting down <clears throat> and um, on that line, I told you that I was not going after that experience i was like doing them when me and my line brother was in a house and they got me from work and i had on dress pants and they just snatched me from work threw me in the car and um and me and him went to this house and we went to his house we went in the cut we we was straight into the cut and when we went in the cut i had got so much wood but not with no regular jeans on i had these dress pants on that my behind started bleeding so the blood was coming through the pants so they stopped me from getting wood. And then my line brother, he took all the rest. And when I say wood, I'm talking about four strokes, manhood, scholarship, perseverance, and uplift for everybody on the line before we pledged. And it was like 15 or 12 of them dudes. So I went through like, I think six of them until I started bleeding. And then he went through for both of us, all of that. And I watched him get up after about eight or nine strokes. And I saw a tear like he, he cried, but he wasn't crying, crying. It was just a like, you know, and then he went back down. He never came back up and they kept they kept beating him. But he was just a hardcore Bamberg, South Carolina brother. And he just I watched him stay in the cut for all of that wood, 80 strokes or so. Mm -hmm. And and he took that for me. And then we, you know, we got out of there. This the crazy part of that story is not that the crazy part of the story is at that point I was living. I wasn't living in the in the with all the line brothers at that point my pants was i was at my mom's house in hampton virginia and i left these bloody pants in my mom's room my mom and my sister thought i was homosexual because they found these bloody pants now this is the thing they asked me are you gay i i didn't let i didn't even answer them i just took my clothes left and left the house and the reason why I couldn't tell them anything, because if I would have told them the truth, they would they didn't care nothing about no pledging or nothing. They would have started making calls and I would have missed my opportunity to pledge or, you know, what I'm saying or, or anything like that. So you I don't care what you think about me. I'm going over. <laughs> and that was my mama and my sister. So I didn't care if you thought that I was homosexual or anything. It didn't make me no difference. I'm pledging. Now, when I went over, they understood everything that was happening because my sister went to Norfolk State and Norfolk State is known for, for hazing that over there, mm -hmm. Pi Gamma. So it was like they didn't understand what was going on and they thought I was engaging in a perverted lifestyle. But it wasn't that at all. It was a perverted lifestyle. It was underground hazing, but but I couldn't say nothing about it. So that was the wild part of that story is that I couldn't tell nobody. And that brother ended up dying 
um, Anthony. I buried him. It's a picture of me with his line brothers and his witchcraft. Now, this me as a denounce member. I had a before he died. I had a dream of me and him in a boxing ring and we was fighting. Boom, 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 boom. And we stopped fighting for a minute, got our breath and we went back to fighting. And I woke up and I said, I got to call Anthony and tell him, you know, what I'm saying about my experience of, of, of denouncing. But he didn't pick up the phone. He didn't answer my message. Homecoming was coming up. So I said, I, I gave up. I was like, man, I ain't going to mess with it. I'm going to see him in person at homecoming. But guess what? He died before I could get before that homecoming. And I ended up seeing him in his casket. Now, the story don't stop there. We get to the funeral. All his LBs, all my line brothers are there at the funeral. It's like 30, 40 cues. I'm the only denounced member. And there's one dude running around the funeral. I don't know him. He's asking, man, I want to talk to you about Anthony. I want to talk to you about Anthony. Nobody would talk to him because the bros don't talk. But I'm not the bros no more like that. So I said, man, what's going on? He said, man, I'm a Mason. I was with Anthony the night he died. I was like, what? I said, you know, what's up? We, so what are you talking about? He said, we was in the house together. And now this is when we grown men. He says he was in there breaking down because he was he had been a Mason, but he was a new Q. He said he was in the house breaking down the shield of me. So the night my line brother, he was my line brother on that line. The night he died, he was he treated the ritual and the shield and stuff like a when people talk about this is a religion to some people. This is a straight up sacred religion and they will hurt you over it. Mm -hmm. So that's that's that story. That's one story that's all connected like that from going online to burying a brother to a brother telling me the night he died, he was about that business. So cues have this like um, stereotype of being like really tough and it sounds like it's been earned. What is so great about being a cue? Why would people put themselves through that just so they could be in that particular organization? It, it is the same. Every chapter is different. As far as the brutality, you can't go off of looks and how hard or vicious a line looks. Every chapter is different. And every fraternity have their crazy chapters and their cool chapters that are not as wild. So like different chapters will have names like bloody this and bloody that. They earned that bloody title. Because you was going to shed blood in, in their chapter at some point. So it, it is not just the cues. The cappers, why, like there's two types of everything. You have the people who come through legally and don't go through this process. But all, everybody takes the oath. But then you got the ones who go underground. Now it's a little bit different because back then it was accepted. I watched a kappa in 1984 online, Beta Chi. I watched him slap one of his pledges right on the yard and it was like it was nothing. Hazen was not, it was illegal, but it was just an accepted way of life. So when you, when you coming up, especially the HBCU, you're not just pledging Greek fraternities, you're pledging everything. Mm -hmm. The band, the quiet, I don't care what it is. They're going to make you go through, especially the band, they're going to make you go through a process to it, but it slowly started fading out and it's no different than the military the military used to beat people up now you go through basic training and they don't post to touch you but back in the days you're talking about in the 30s and the 40s you was going to get clocked in your face coming through basic training you was going to go through some whoopings and basically it makes sense because you're going to you know i went to airborne 100 pounds ago i was airborne i was jumping out of planes hot helicopters at fort benny um, your job when you hit the ground is to take the M16, lock and low, start killing people. So for me to beat you up coming through basic training ain't nothing. And this is some of the mentality that came into fraternities. It was military men bringing in that um, basic training into the pledge processes. So that's part of it. It's several things. It's not just one thing that made the, the pledge processes of all the divine nine different it's a lot of things mixed together african traditions 
military traditions. That's why when you go to white fraternities, they pledge totally different. The culture is totally different. So they, a lot of them will have just a hardcore drinking culture. Mm -hmm. And then they be getting into like, we get into some demonic type rituals. The white frats be on a whole nother level. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so we don't really, I don't really concentrate on them, but they be getting into some mess mm -hmm. where they get into like the cloaks and really get into the occult. So, yeah. but all of it's connected because a lot of it is basically just modern day Baal worship. Baal worship. Wow. That's all it is. Well, do you have any positive memories? I do. I try to balance it out a yeah. little bit. Like, what did you like about Omega Sapphire? And then what ultimately caused you to come out of it? Yeah, I did. My whole experience at Omega Sapphire just about was positive. You just got to go through a little crap <laughs> to get in. You know what I'm saying? But the, the come like the church, the church is supposed to be basically family orientated a man leave his mother a father and mother cleave to his wife they become one flesh and the fellowship was supposed to be of these families coming together in a community and they supposed to love each other and help each other and all that the only thing you can compare to real fellowship today you got to really look at like the amish and the and the mennonites and how they build together in their communities and then when a child wants to go wayward they leave the community and they might come back like a prodigal son type deal. But our churches are based on something totally different. So it's based on Sunday and Wednesday. And it really stems from the Catholic system. So we have a total different system. But the fraternities got the love aspect that the church is supposed to have. So when you're thinking, why are these people so tight? Because they really love people say, why are these gangbangers willing to kill for what is going on? Because they really do love each other. Now, the concepts and the values that they have in there sometimes are negative or a, a lot of times it's negative and stuff. But we we share apartments, houses together. If you need food, we got you. These are the same concepts supposed to be in the church. Because the book of Acts was talking about how they just had everything in common and they, they shared everything and it was and then the money was thrown at the apostles' feet and he picked it up and distributed it back. And that's how the frat works. So when they see this bond and this tightness, that's how we work as a chapter. If you need a place to stay, you're sleeping right over there. Mm -hmm. Let somebody try to come sleep at your house. Not yo, I ain't talking you. I'm talking about. <laughs> Well, I'm talking about crack, crack, the, the drug culture. It used to be kind of like that. The drug culture in the 80s, 86 changed the whole dynamics of especially the black community. So it became where people just didn't trust nobody, family members included. So it's to the point where we're just scattered. Families just get scattered in, in, in the church, too. So you'll have no more little house on the prairie community type church. Now it's just a bunch of strangers coming together who really don't know each other. Mm -hmm. But in the frat, oh, you know, every, you know, his mama, his daddy, his major, where he from. You've been in his house eating his food. You know, his girl, you pick them up, you drop them off. You trust you. You try not to violate other friends. You know what I'm saying? Um, property and stuff like that is straight family. And that's why the bond, that soul tie, a soul tie has been established. But it's not a godly soul tie. And that's the problem. The soul ties and fraternities are not godly. So now you got a problem because our soul ties is based on going through these rituals. So we opened ourselves up for foul and unclean spirits. That's why I don't care if you say a oh, hundred years ago, it was this and it was that, <laughs> but the, it ain't based on Christ. It's not based on Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus. It's not based on the blood of the Passover lamb. Therefore, I don't care what how many scriptures y'all twist or not twist, it don't matter. Because um, by no other name can man be saved. So if it ain't about Jesus Christ being lifted up, what are y'all lift? what are we what I used to be, what am I really lifting up? If I be lifted up from earth, I draw men to me. What are y'all lifting up? Who are we being drawn to? Why do we worship the founders? Because it's really worship. So <clears throat> we do all that for the founders, but don't do it for Jesus. He'd be like, well, if we do it for Jesus, hold up. The fraternities are mostly 
Jesus in there. So you saying we're going to offend our Muslim Omega brothers? Hold up. We're going to offend. This is where the masonry comes in because of the ecumenical nature of it. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that if you uplift Jesus, you're going to offend your Jewish Mason brothers or your Hindu Mason brothers or your satanic Mason, whatever the case may be, Jesus. But hold up, the great architect of the universe is God. The great architect is the great architect of the universe, Jesus. Any real Mason will tell you who studied Manly P. Hall, Albert Pike, who studied the great Masonic writers will be like, no. The great architect, the great architect of the universe is not Jesus. That being the case, hold up, Jesus is my God. Emmanuel, God with us. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got a problem. Therefore, masonry is diametrically opposed to the faith. Not all the faith, because you got Christians who do not believe that Jesus is God. They don't have no problem in the lodge. But to the Christians who believe in the deity of Jesus Christ, you got a problem because they're going to put your Jesus with Buddha, Confucius and Muhammad. No, Jesus is God in the flesh. So through him, all things have been created. It ain't the same. So at, it would say every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. So if that being the case, he is the supreme being. Oh, he is the manifestation of the Bible says the visible of the invisible. So hold up. If that's him, everything was created through the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. The word. No, nope, we got a problem. Now, this is where I make the decision. Say, How did I get? So everything in the frat is not bad. No, but the parts that are died when I when I got saved, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. There's a change because I met a Freemason, a former Freemason from Haiti who was, he was doing all this sign language. I said, man, I know what you're doing. 20 years ago, I met this man and he said, um, he spoke Creole. So he came off to the side, this church in New York, he came off to the side. He said, he said, what do you need? I said, man, listen, you speak English? He said, yes. I said, um, what was you doing up there? He was doing a video. He said, I was showing, you know, he said, the God of the Bible is not the God of the lodge. He's the God of Abraham and Jesus, is not the God of the lodge. I was like, what that got to do with me? I'm a Q. Oh, I know your fraternity. He said, your initiation and your rituals come from us. No more words were said. I went straight to my basement apartment, started praying, started researching. It took me two weeks. And I knew that, see, Omega Sapphire at that point, Deltas, AK, not the Deltas, AK, all the rest of the so-called the Divine Nine, right? They had got rid of the Pledge Clubs, except for Delta. They kept the Minerva Circle. They kept their Pledge Club in the beginning. I don't know if they got it now, but in 1991-92, they didn't get rid of the Minerva Circle. But everybody else got rid of the Lampotters Club, the Scrotus Club, the Sphinxman's Club, the, the Ivy. We, there was no longer existed. There was no more pledge clubs. So I, I made the rationalization. I said, they can change if they want to because they got rid of all of the pledge clubs and they created the membership intake process. I said, but they, they're not going to change because we are the stepping stones to Prince Hall Freemasonry. And that's what that is. So if they change that, they changed the whole day. This stuff wasn't meant to be no 50, 60 year old person trying to be a Q or Cap or a Sigma. No, you were supposed to join that college frat or join that thing young and then move on to enter the apprentice, fellow craft, master mason in the Prince Hall Lodge. That's what was supposed to happen. Not for everybody, but for the tapped ones, for the ones that are supposed to be tapped in, you're supposed to be the college educated leadership of the local lodges. And, and what happened was the fraternities became as popular or more popular than the Prince Hall Lodge. To the point that now you can become a Mason at 18. Before you can become a Mason till you was, don't quote me on this, but 21. You had to join them college frats or just wait. But they changed it because they thing was probably dying out because everybody and their mama want to be a Delta Sig, a.k.a. a Q, a Kappa and all this. But what they didn't realize, you was joining something that don't have no knowledge. It was just a little taste of the so-called light. 
the real light is in Freemasonry. The light of the world, like the Alpha's talking about. You was interviewed. I don't know if you was interviewing. They talking about the light of the world. Alpha Phi Alpha, the light of the world. Alpha Phi Alpha is the light of the world. It is not the light of the world, Jesus Christ. It is raw. The sun God. It is what Sphinx is pointing to. They're talking about raw. So when you when you don't have a definition of terms, you'll be like mad at oh they 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 thinking they Jesus. Nah, in that same alpha ritual, they got the whole chapter of John 1. In the beginning was the word is in their ritual. So you be like, they not talking about that. They're talking about something else. Ethiopians in service to all mankind. They talking about that Sphinx and the not any Sphinx, but the great Sphinx that is uh, Giza. And that thing is pointing due east. And what is it doing? It's, it's a sun god worship. So Alpha Phi Alpha is representing that to the fullest. And that was the first frat. But the frat before them was the Fa family, the P-H-A family they say we family pha prince hall affiliated so they are the real light so not the real light of jesus christ of the word of god i'm talking about they're the light that they're telling you to search for you just get a little bit of it in the d9 but you might get thirsty you might get hungry but i got man ask one to be one now you becoming an now q that member of omega sci-fi all the brothers of omega sci-fi who listening tonight when you become an into the apprentice, the first degree, you're going to be shocked because your whole Omega life, they had you Psalms 133, Psalms 133, how good and pleasant for brother to dwell together in unity. And you like, yes, yes. But that unity is not the Holy Spirit. That unity is the brotherhood of Omega Sci-Fi. So you thinking this is all about Omega. Little do you know that on the end of the apprentice, the Bible is going to be on the altar. And on top of the Bible, it's going to be the compass in the square, and it's going to sit on top of what? Psalms 133. So, okay, I know you just said pretty much they tried to, um, you hear feedback? I'm sorry. Mm -mm. Okay. You said they, they pretty much are pre prepping you for um, Prince Hall Freemasonry. Do they say that in D9? Like no, no, no. And, and, and this is subtle. Like, like you, you're talking, um, in the garden of Eden, it said that he was the most subtle and crafty beast in the field. It ain't going to be no overt knock over the head to say that we want all y'all young ladies to be Eastern stars. We want all y'all, you know, um, fraternity members to go on and graduate and become Prince Hall Masons or Masons. It's, it's way more subtle than that, because imagine at the beginning of all the fraternity sororities, there's there's Masons and Eastern stars and, and Boule in there. And they're just putting a little bit of their stuff into the information. Everybody not going to get it. It's a remnant that's going to be like, you know, I want to know more. It's the same thing in Christ. You got the people who get saved and they be like, OK, I'm just going <laughs> to go to church, go home. And you know what I'm saying? Go to work, take care of my kids, lock my doors, and that's it. But then you got those Christians who be like, mm, I really want to understand what this thing is about. I want to know what my faith is. I want to know where it came from. I want to get, and they go, they dive into the deep end. They be like, we're going to get it. And then they catch the, I want to evangelize. I want to tell people. I thought I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I can keep this to myself. They get this feeling and they want me. I'm going to New York. I'm going to Texas. I've been all over the United States in 20 years. But when I went to these places, I would tell people I'm on tour. But in my tour, I'm a, I'm a gospel artist. Before I got saved, I was smoking the Philly. I was doing all that. I was hanging out with thugs, money, homies, and drugs. But when I got saved, this is what happened. I said, you was a Christian individual. You did the ritual. You crossed the burning sands. Hazel became habitual. Now you're walking with the brick in your hand. 32 degrees freeze. You's a baby, man. So I transformed. And when I transformed, I couldn't keep it to myself. And the churches didn't want to hear nothing I had to say. So I put this stuff into poems and poetry and songs and this and that. And all of a sudden now I sit back. I had 10 kids. 
I had a job the whole time. I, I stopped going on tour in 2010 and Holy Hip Hop Awards in Atlanta. I said, this is this is show business. I retire. I, I, re, I retired from gospel rap music, and but I didn't stop making gospel, contemporary R&B and rap music. I just did it at home and I ended up amassing 21 or 25 albums that's being turned into a book right now. So it was like, but what's in those albums? Most artists who rap ain't about to write what they put down in their songs because they ain't saying nothing. I got sermons in mind. I got lessons in mind. So I can write it out or I can speak it as a spoken word piece and you're going to feel it, especially if you was in what I was in. If you branded like I was branded, you're going to feel it when I talk about smelling that smell in that house when them irons hit that flesh. <laughs> so this is reality rap. So if I was in the whole houses, I don't mean it as a derogatory word, but I didn't come out just a frat house. I came out of prostitution. I was with, so with this real secret society is sexual perversion. And I had a problem since I went to Tijuana, Mexico and lost my virginity. I was tied to a harlot and became one. So I had an issue, but guess what? I was delivered from it. I was delivered from it and became a husband and a father of 10. But when I came into the church systems, Oh, other men got the problem I used to have. They they love Jesus. They in the pulpit, but they still in the strip club. They still in the hope. They never got delivered. Now I've been delivered from a lot of. I ain't got. I didn't get delivered from everything because it's a lifelong process. But what I got delivered from convicts a lot of people to the point that if you get convicted but you don't want to change. You're going to keep preaching with that devil on your back. And when Brother P come around, you're going to be like, mm -mm, I ain't having that. <laughs> Brother P said he don't play. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't no game. And they can't stand it because I'm not, I'm not going to be in front of your church with no picket sign. Your pastor is a mason. He worships the devil, not me. If you want to get down with the bell worship, that's on you. They, see, if you can't see it, you say you a Delta and you go and you love Jesus and all of that. And you can't tell you. You don't know who Minerva is. You ignorant to Greek mythology because they present it to us. When I say they, I'm talking about the enemy has subtly and craftily put mythology as fake and phony not realizing that zeus and jupiter and baal and all of these things were real principalities that were worship so when you go to greece when you go to rome when you go to babylon the ancient they got them relics them diana in the book of acts was worshiped by the whole world and that's why i tell people i said you got to understand the very thing you playing around with is the very thing that god said pharaoh tell let my people go why he wanted the people of Israel to come out of the Egypt system of worshiping idols to worship him. Mm -hmm. Worship the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. You got to come out of that sun worship to worship the son of the living God. And a lot of people just don't believe when Joshua and, and I say, if you believe, fine. The, what the Bible say about believing the demons believe and tremble. Mm -hmm. So this way, when it comes to who do you say just Jesus is, I'm telling you that Jesus is in the beginning. And that's the problem with the whole world. It comes to who do you believe Jesus is? Who do you believe Yahshua is? What did he do for us? How did he, why did he die? Why would he come down here to die? Why he shed his blood on, did he raise from the dead? How do you believe that? I believe it by faith. By faith, I believe all of this happened. I believe the word of God is true. Mm -hmm. And by faith, I believe it. And then because of that belief and that salvation coming and being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, uh oh, I got supernatural protection. I can sleep. Come to me, all ye that are burdened, heavy laden. And I will give you what? Rest. Rest. You no longer nervous, fearful. The fraternities through the pledging system instill fear. And fear in you. They even tell you that fear is a mind killer. It's a little evil that disintegrates from, from inside out. We must learn to face. The Bible didn't tell us to face and control fear. The Bible told us um, we have not been given the spirit of fear. But we've been given the spirit of power and love and a sound mind. And it said perfect love casted out 
all fear. So if you got perfect love as Jesus Christ, so if you got them, fear is not. A, so you mean I can't come up here and talk about things that are causing my people to be in bondage? This is Egypt. Just because it's Greek. Oh, it's still Egypt. Them Greek gods and them Egyptian gods are the they, they're different principalities. But listen to what the Bible says. Satan's kingdom is not divided. So it don't matter if you worship in Zeus, Jupiter, Osiris, Baal. They all brothers. And they all under the same leadership of Satan. And, and we can get to the names of all that stuff later. But it's like the world is, I believe it when I see it. The Bible is, we walk by faith, not by sight. The two things are diametrically opposed from each other. And most people have never had a spiritual thing to happen to them to let them know, oh, it's more than what you're seeing. So when Brother P come up in the space, there's going to be a problem in the place because I'm not coming by myself. I'm coming with diadems. I'm coming with the Holy Ghost. What's more powerful than that? Nothing, because this is the spirit of Jesus Christ, the spirit of the most high. So when you come into that place and God sent you there, it's going, when I came to Houston, Houston, we got a problem. Brother P is here. <laughs> now, no church knew I was there, but Shahid knew I was there. Mm -hmm. No Same church knew. No I interviewed Shahid a few months ago, and that, that turned out really, really good. So if y'all are enjoying this conversation, go ahead and check that one out, too. But go ahead, Brother P. Continue. Thank you, Asa. Shahid, Shahid knew I was there because I didn't know who Shahid was. So you'd be like, well, what, what happened? Well, the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. I, I have um, my peace is taken away from me in the city that I'm at in South Carolina. And I know when that happens, it's time to go. It's time to move on. Me and my wife got together. We both agreed. Houston packed our eight kids and a pregnant wife sold everything we had and went to Houston. Stayed in a hotel for four months. Finally got our first apartment. Then we got our house. Now, when I got the house, I went to this church out there. Wow, church. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But we went to the church with a, a guy. He's an ex-crip. And believe me, these gangs got the same. They denounce. You have to denounce and renounce them for them, them gangs, them crips in the blood. But I'm with an ex-crip from Baton Rouge. And me and him, he brung his two kids. I brought my three kids. And we sit in there. A week before I was on the camp, I just got my book. I just got a hundred copies. So I went to the campus and I'm going to give it away. Man, it was spring break. Nobody's there. But it was still some students there. So I ran up on a young lady and she was at the United Methodist Student Union. I'm, I think I'm saying it right. And I walked up and I said, I know the United Methodist. I, I was raised in that. You know what I'm saying? So I walked in there and said, I want to talk to the chaplain or the pastor or whatever. She's like, he's talking to something right now, but I can give you a tour. Her name is Blessings. So I think it's blessing. So she was like, okay. So she walked me around. It's a nice building. So she saw my book and on my book, there's a paddle. So she was intrigued and it's purple. She was like, what is that about? I said, well, it's about a lot of things, but I came out of fraternities and, and sorority, Omega Sapphire, you know, she says, listen, I was on the line of the first AKA line that's coming back on the campus. And she said that one night I had made line. And I was supposed to be on the, the thing. She said, but I went home, had a dream that a sister, the big sister, gave me a cup of blood and I drunk it. And I woke up scared. She said she was so scared she was about to quit. But then she gathered herself together and she was going to go through with it. She went to her church that Sunday. The pastor, this guy named um, Pastor Irvin in Houston, Texas. I'm calling his name because if you want to fact check this stuff, you're going to see who this person is. She's, she went to the church that's her church and she said he said he called her out she he said that when you joined that sorority demons went into you come up here for prayer she came up he did deliverance on her she said she went back to the to her mentor who was supposed to bring her. she told her what happened she said the woman never talked to her again she said she said brother p you are the second person i'm telling this to 
I said, well, here's a copy of my book. You ain't got to pay me for it. What church do you go to? She tells me the Tree of Life Ministries or whatever. And I was like, okay, I'm bringing my daughters and my brother and his little kids. And we come into fellowship with you. I didn't know nothing about them. So I went to the church, sat down. You know what I'm saying? Me and my man, the ex-crip, you know, Tony. Tony, he out of Houston. He's from Baton Rouge, but in Houston. So we sit inside, but with our kids, we enjoy the service. Um, new people stand up and, and visitors stand up and introduce. So my man stands up. He says, my name is Tony, and I was invited by him, and I'm um, glad to be here. Everybody looked at me like, who is he? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, oh, snap. So I said, I said, he was like, stand up. I said, my name is Brother P. Yeah, I invited him, but it was the young lady sitting up there. She was sitting up there with her friend. I said, I, I met her, and she had told me a story about her, a.k.a., and I'm an ex-Q, and, and we got to know each other, and I told her I'm going to go fellowship with you on Sunday. And then I sat down and said, and then they, everybody's like, oh, okay. So I sat down. <clears throat> he said, okay, everybody meet and greet. You know how them churches meet and greet. Everybody touching. And, Hello, how you doing? Three Two girls, ex, they came up to me. Brother P, Brother P, we're ex-Deltas from Prairie View. And a guy comes up. I was like, what? It's like, yeah, we ex-Deltas. I said, I knew we didn't have much time because, you know, the that, that meet and greet going to be like four minutes. I said, put your name in my phone. They put my they names in my phone as, I ain't going to mention her name because she's not public with it. But blah, 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 ex-Delta. Blah, blah, blah. The other girl, blah, blah, blah. X Delta. I said, cool. I'm going to give y'all a ring. Church was over. I met the pastor and I'm looking at him. We, we, you know, he had an entourage, the whole nine. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting there like, I'm going to talk to this guy because if he did all that, I, because I came into faith and that Haitian guy who got me out of, who I got out of the fraternity from, it was a Nigerian who him and his wife took me through deliverance. So I don't play no games when it comes to deliverance. Because sometimes it can be shady. So I sat there and I'm, I'm waiting. I'm going to talk to this guy. Tony had to go. So me and my kids are there waiting. You know, it's like at the basketball game. So like everybody want to talk to the, the, the pastor. So finally he gets to me. He don't say nothing. He can barely look me in my face. And I'm like, okay. You know, um, you know my name is Brother P. You, you heard him. And I'm in the area if you need any assistance or anything like that with this area, blah, 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 blah. And that was it. Cold as ice. I was with his, uh, his, his, one of his ministers, me and him was, while we was waiting for him to come up, we was hitting it off. Like we, just like how me and you never met, but we've talked to each other, but we just, chop, before we started, we just chopping it up. It's going back. It's like tennis. It's like, bad, bad. You ain't got to look at no notes or nothing. That's how me and his, his, his minister was, but him. It was nothing. It was cold as ice from the head to the floor. And I'm just looking at him like, mm. and that was it. Never saw him again. You understand what I'm saying? So when I leave, me and the young lady, we corresponded two or three times. And, you know, she way younger. I'm, I'm 52, 53 at a time. And, and she's a young girl. So I just talked to her a couple of times, try to tell her what I'm into, where I'm at on Facebook, blah, blah, blah. Leave it alone. One day she calls me. She said, Brother P. I got a dude who thinking about denouncing, he want to talk to you. I said, give him a number. She said, okay, it's Shahid. I said, okay. Shahid calls me. I said, what's happening? He said, man, I want to talk to you. I said, well, I said, where you at right now? This is like 12 o'clock in the day or like one o'clock. He says, now nah, I'm about to go to Dallas. We in Houston, but I'm about to go to Dallas. I got to cut some hair. I said, nah, brother, I'm coming to see you now. He said, huh? I said, yeah. He said, okay, meet me on the corner of the campus at Subway's. I said, I'll be there 930 at night. So I run up. I get there 930. He, I'm thinking he's going to take me on campus. This dude says, follow me. He says, my line, two of my line brothers are going to be there. Is that okay? I'm like, this dude, what in the world I'm into now? But I'm like, God, you with me. He takes me around the corner. I can tell this story now because it's, it's three years later and he, he's out. He takes me around the corner into the community, opens the door. It's the frat house. I'm talking the shield is like six foot tall and, and paraphernalia everywhere. I'm going in the frat house. He says, okay, you sit right. So, but I'm cool. I'm like, okay. I sat down. He goes in the back, got his L, his line brothers. They came and sat down. He comes out the back with the Bible in his hand. He haven't denounced yet, 
but he's the chaplain, but he's for real about this Bible. He that's why I be telling people they be like, Man, can a Christian be Greek? I say, homie, I was a Christian and in the fraternity. It's a process. You understand what I'm saying? He comes up with the Bible, sits down, I begin to chop it up. And then it was over. Two hours later, it's over. They was like, Brother P, we want to take you to lunch. I said, nah, man, I got to go home. My kids is there. My wife works overnight. I got to go be with the kids. He said, okay, we're checking. I didn't hear from him again. So three weeks later, he hits me up. About three weeks later, he hit me up. And you know, the young people are into texting. I'm into the phone. I Texting is like, I can do it, but I'm, man, what's going on? So I'm new to the text game. He said, you get my text? I was like, no. <laughs> Y'all text? He was like, check it out, man. I'm going to send it to you again. Now, in 2010 or 2009, I was the first Q in the world to put a YouTube video up of denouncing the world. The only person was before me on YouTube was the young lady, the Haitian young lady who was a Sigma Gamma Rho. She interviewed with David, Pastor David Williams and a Sigma. They was like at the end of 2009. Then I came out in 2010, but you didn't know who I was because I just put my chapter picture up and I'm in the middle of it. They sent me that picture. I said, man, it's a great picture to use for my, but it's just a still picture and me talking. I changed it now. You see me with my face right now. So he said, man, check this link out. So I go to the link. Shahid, the second former member of Omega Sci-Fi who comes out on YouTube. But the difference is I was a 30, 34 when I denounced. And, and when I put that picture up in 2010, I was like 40 years old. Shahid is like 22, 21. A neophyte, he just went over. It goes viral. The next thing I know, this young man got dudes coming at me in private. 20, 30 denounced cues in private because a lot of people don't want to come in public. What I tell all the brothers who denounce and they in this because because it's a fear thing. I tell them your safest place is in the public, but it's it's how you come out. If you come out raw, raw, you want to fight. That's what you're going to get. But if you come out and you got the spirit of God on you, they got devils in them. They're going to recognize it. Dudes who come out of the mafia and gang members because of Christ can go speak to the mafia they can speak to the public about what they used to do because they've been delivered they've been set free and they don't have no fear in fact they know they're like moses they've been de delivered to go back and get more net um harriet tubman style so we go in this thing i tell people i'm not it's a love movement with me i had an album called did i just join a cult my second album was called cult love project you got this after you come out it ain't about going to war with them. It's about showing them some love because you was just like them. So I went in. Shahid comes out. Boom, boom, boom. Next thing, Cedric from Ohio joins us. And this is all online. This is a community online. Cedric Banks comes out. He, he gets with me. talks to me. Blah, blah. He talks to Fred. He said, I, I talked to Shahid first. I, I knew you from your end, but your number was old on YouTube. I couldn't get in contact with you, but we start chopping it up. This dude denounces and three, four of his line brothers denounce. But Cedric's the only one who's public. Cedric, when Cedric, he denounces on Instagram. But Instagram is not really that spot. Instagram got its own culture. But when you denounce on YouTube and Facebook, now this is back uh, about two years ago, three years ago. Now it's it's an avalanche of people denounce, especially on YouTube, and then they bring their YouTube video to Facebook. But I'm telling you, it started out, Minister Fred Hatchett, Minister Elder Taliba, who's now a pastor in Atlanta, Minister Gail Gray, um, myself and i came as the last they was those three so when i joined them three it was a, a a young lady who wasn't in no sorority who started that ministry and used to have this thing called the biblical perspective of greekdom i joined them and one day she told me she said i've searched the whole internet and i've only found the four of y'all as denounced members who are willing to speak you know, now, now youtube is changing the game hearing you talk about this stuff it's like 
kind of similar to hearing people talk about coming out of uh, homosexuality, coming out of different cults like Hebrew Israelism, Jehovah's Witness, all this kind of mm -hmm. stuff. It's just like, you know, the fear of what people are going to say and do. Yeah. You know, people who I used to call my brother, how are they going to react now that I'm no longer in this organization? That's crazy to me. Mm hmm. Yes. It, and it's a real fear. It ain't no fake fear. If you're not real, you know, because in, in Omega Sci-Fi, you could be, you could have pledged for 16 weeks being a heart. When you get out here, you don't act right. They're going to rip them shirts and leave you for dead in the street. This is a fraternity that will do that. So they know this, that it's warfare amongst the brethren. We fight each other, but after the fight, we love on each other. But if you don't understand that culture and you like you come in here a certain kind of way, like if you don't understand the underground and you came through paper, it's a dangerous place to be in the underground. There's not a cue on them. And there's not a member of Omega Sci-Fi with a brand who didn't pledge. And if he did, he's crazy. <laughs> It's like motorcycle gangs. You're not just going to jump on no Harley and start riding around the country thinking it's all sweet and gravy. We're going to be cruising. Them hell's angels going to might pull up on you. You better have, if you're not saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, you better be packing a gun. They're going to take your bike. So, so it is similarities in all these things because imagine there's a motorcycle group called hell's angels, demons riding around it's the same in the frat they don't know why y'all so mean why what is that spirit in y'all it is not jesus mm -hmm. i don't care if you're the pastor of the church you know when atomic dog when george clinton doing all them drugs i met i took a picture with george man i wish i had that picture <laughs> i wish i had that picture bros the members of omega sci-fi will lose their mind when atomic dog come on Uh-oh, can y'all hear me? I think we're having technical difficulties. Can y'all hear me? Let me know in the chat. Give me a one if you can hear me. Give me a one in the chat if you can hear me. Okay, y'all can still hear me. Can can y'all still see Brother P? I think Brother P might be having some uh some technical difficulties. That's all right. Man, it was getting good. I was wanting to see the rest of the story. Okay, he's moving again. Maybe he's almost back. Maybe he's almost back. Okay, well, we're gonna wait until he comes back. Okay. Are y'all enjoying this? Give me, give me uh give me a five if you're enjoying this conversation. Y'all been hanging tight with me. I, it's pretty much been the same number of people since we started. So they can't hear him anymore. Hopefully we'll be back soon. Oh man, this is getting good, you guys. This is getting so good. Um, four plus one. That's right. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight. We're gonna just wait until Brother P can come back. Hope, oh, I think he's back. Is he back? <laughs> yeah. Back. Okay. We're like, oh man, cliffhanger. What happened? Okay. <laughs> no, no. I, I, if somebody calls in, it, uh, I think, I guess it'll interrupt the, the okay. thing. Okay. Now, now, so, so I'm gonna get it because uh, I know who's calling me. You keep talking, I'm gonna make it where they're not gonna call me no more and I'm gonna put it on do not disturb. And then I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna come back in. Okay. So right, give me gonna... one minute to, so they don't call me back. Okay. All right. Jeff Short says he was speaking facts on masonry because I've been in it. Well, Jeff Short, maybe I need to talk to you. You got a YouTube channel, bro? If you got a YouTube channel, drop the link. I'd be wanting to hear all these stories because it's not, it's not impossible to research secret societies, but obviously because they are secret societies, uh, some of their information is limited. So anybody watching this right now, you got the inside scoop, whether you've been one or you know, know some things, holla at me, who knows? Maybe you could be right here on the channel if you're interested. Faith in Psalm 91 says, real good. I appreciate that. All right, all right, all right. Joseph Early, you had a question earlier. 
No pun intended. Can you hear? Can you hear me right now? Yep, I can hear you now. Where Where is that "Do Not Disturb" button on <laughs> on Apple? On iPhone. On iPhone. Okay. I want to hit. I usually go on the airplane mode. I like bring. I'm sorry, you guys. I bring it down, and there's like the. I guess I could show you. If I if I hit airplane mode, it's not gonna cut you off. It should. Well. The the nighttime the nighttime button is the do not disturb. Can y'all see that? Oh, sorry. That that button right there is the do not disturb. The nighttime one. Okay, let me let me go, let me pull that down. And you said the nighttime button. Yeah, the one with the Where little moon. It's the, like the little moon. So usually I go at the top corner of the phone. Oh, focus. Okay, nighttime. Do not disturb. Okay, got it on. I think right. we should be good now. Oh, okay, we can still okay. talk while we did that. <laughs> we cooking with grease now. Okay, you got to remind me where I was at. 55 years old, I forget. Oh, man. Okay, we already got through how you met Shahid and all these people denouncing and how you were the first one. I did not know you were the first Q in the world to go public with your denouncement, at least on YouTube and, and internet. On YouTube. Fred, yeah. Minister Fred Hatchett is the first there's many cues that denounce, probably all the way from the beginning of this. But Minister Fred Hatchett is the first in 1995. He denounced his testimony can be found on out from um, among them. I don't know if it's out from among them dot com, but it's out from among them's website. Mm -hmm. And you can look up Omega Sci-Fi and his testimony is there. So that was 1995. I I copied his style and got. He gave, I got testimonies from him and created a blog called exbglounion.wordpress.com, which was nothing but testimonies of all the different um, members of different fraternities. We had everybody. We didn't have an iota, but we had everybody else a testimony from them. Um, then I went to Facebook in 06 and I copied his style. I copied what he did on a website. I said in 06, I'm going to do that on Facebook. The same same thing, EXB Julian, but it was supposed to be pri only ex members. There was a young lady who tried to play Sigma Gamma Row. I forgot her name, but she kicked me in private. She said, Brother P, she had a website too. Her website was called Divine Truth is Here, and it was hardcore. <laughs> but she said, Brother P, you should open it up for people who tried to pledge and people who never pledged so they could know. I said, You know, that's a great idea. So if you go to the about, I wrote that like that. I changed it because of her input and I changed it to open it up for anybody. So EXB Jello Union on Facebook is not, there's members of fraternities on, everything is on and anybody can post. It's mm -hmm. just that there's, there's moderators at the, the first moderators used to be in 06 were all the ex members. It was only like six of us. So it was an ex Zeta, two XQs, um, an ex AKA, um, I think an ex Delta, but it was all of us, like five of us, and we were the, the administrators. And then I got kicked off of Facebook for going so hard. I was going hard, but I only got on Facebook to do evangelism. I didn't get on Facebook to be like, yeah, how you doing? What you, what you up to? <laughs> what, where are you going this weekend? I was changing diapers. You understand what I'm saying? I got on because I knew this was a church. I mm -hmm. said, this is a fellowship. I know that I can spread information that cannot be spread in no church building. This information, like an outreach ministry. So I treated Facebook like Facebook Church of God in Christ, Facebook um, United Methodist Church. It was Facebook Fellowship. And that was 06. And I patented it after Minister Fred Hatch's website, don'tgogreek.com. But I just did it different because I want I didn't want the name to be so blatant because because I don't want you to even pledge. But I knew some people were going to do it just like me. So I said, I want to bring a union of people together who are in it and out of it and some who are thinking about it all to come together and you could post. So if you're not a member of a fraternity or an ex member, you can still post in our site. It's just that if you super off the chain, you know, you can go, you go get them hands. Yeah. You do what you want. Yeah. It's free. You can do It's like the block. You can do what you want to do in there because if you ain't right, People gonna know it, like you know what I'm saying. If you phone it, and that's what do it happen so many times with us. We love Jesus. Now we have differences, but there's an aspect that should run through us of of love and and being courteous. And you look at some people, you be like, mm, 
I don't care that you are ex Q, a ex Delta, a ex -K, I don't care. You bitter. Mm -hmm. You got a nasty spirit. That's where you That's left spirit. off. People wanted to know you said because you said something about why are y'all so mean and you were talking about George Clinton. So, okay, let's let's jump back <laughs> on. The spirit in George Clinton ain't right. Mm -hmm. Parliament Funkadelics is a music group heavily influenced with drugs. Not only drugs, you don't know what he into. But if you listen to them lyrics, he into something. When he's he talking about that mothership and stuff, this is the language of the nation of Islam. So they mixing all this stuff together to, to, for entertainment. But underneath the entertainment is rebellion and lawlessness. So now you create a song with something that the fraternity was against. The fraternity of Omega Sci-Fi ain't with the dog image. So when people say Omega Sci-Fi is connected to Anubis, is that inaccurate? Is that incorrect? I'm not going to say it's inaccurate spiritually. Okay. I'm going to say it's an accurate ritually and historic. There is no Anubis in, our, in any of the paperwork I've ever seen. Ain't nobody never, ain't no Anubis on no shield. There's some brothers who wrote a book who made that connection, but these were some spiritual brothers who made that. So I'm not saying that the spirit of Anubis, because Anub, the spirit behind Anubis is a demon. So it, I know when I took the license plate off my car, spirits left my back i'm my denouncing is not no i've written nationals i've written i've written a letter and i've written, i've done an email i did an email 20 years ago to the to the world headquarters and then when shahi got out he did a um official letter and stuff a denouncing letter so i did that too but i never got them back saying i was out of the frat but i wasn't like shahi he still was due. He, you know, when you pledge, you paid three years in advance. Okay. These guys okay. denouncing now is hurting them pocketbooks. Mm -hmm. I, my, I was off the rolls years ago. They call it inactive. When you don't pay the money, you, you are not in the frat if you don't pay them dues. Mm -hmm. Don't let these people fool you talking all this junk, wearing all these shirts. If you didn't pay them dues, you're not in it. You're just a shirt wearer. Oh wow! You did. You are denounced just like me. <laughs> <laughs> you are fooling yourself. If you really want to be a real Q, let me see your paperwork, and you got to be putting that money where your mouth is. Wow! Because if you don't pay them tithes to Omega Sci-Fi, you are not in it. I don't care how much you pledged and all this stuff like that. You don't support it financially. And it's the same thing in the church. If you don't support a ministry financially, you're not in that. And I'm not talking about religion or nothing. But if you ain't giving up nothing, you're not. Like, I write, I've written a book. I give away most of my stuff. People be like, man, why do you give away that free? I said, I've been blessed with 10 kids. The blessings comes in all kind of ways. Mm -hmm. I've traveled. I went to Houston. All of a sudden, I'm in a four-bedroom, two-bath house. People are like, man, how did you do? I said, man, I work. My wife worked, and things just pop into place. So I don't, we walk by faith, not by sight. When I went to New York, I'm by myself. I went to New York, boom, I'm in a place. I didn't have to worry about, I don't have to think about where I'm going to live and all these. Now, after 10 kids, you know, you, you get kind of like, I got to settle down. But this is how I'm built. You understand what I'm saying? So faith walking is real in the faith. God telling you to go left and you go left. And this is the part that a lot of people are like, man, are you possessed by a demon? I said, well, I might be possessed by a demon. But the Bible told you to test every spirit to see whether a man or a woman is of God. So you ain't going to, how you going to test the spirit and you don't even know the person? It's some stuff take time. A, a dude ain't going to hide that fruit for a long time. If a dude is interested in talking to you, he not going to be able to hide his 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 mess. But for so long, you're going to be like, you're going to see like what the girls call it, red flags. You're going to be like, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And you could ignore it or you could be like, OK, I'm going to deal with it. If you accept it, you're going to deal with them devils. 
not to say that men got or women are going to be perfect when you meet, but I'm just saying if it's a God thing, he going to work it out. He going to make this thing work. It ain't going to be no effort to, oh man, I'm, God told me to be your, um, you're my wife. Mom, God told me that. I never told my wife that. <laughs> You understand that people be like, I'm not about to tell you that God told me to marry you. You know what I'm saying? So, but, but, but I knew this was true. I was talking to another girl. She was a, she, she was a Delta. I was a Q and she was a Delta. My wife met me when I was a Q and it was at her church that I met this, this former Freemason doing a thing at her church on Jamaica Avenue. Um, and he, he, he put the heavy on me. And, but that wasn't the first time I heard this. I seen people quit the frat. It wasn't called denouncing back then. Dudes would become preachers and ministers and just leave. Like I'm out. I ain't with it. I'm not a nasty Q dog no more. So how we go from knowing when you get saved, you're not a nasty Q dog no more to like, yeah, I'm a Christian nasty Q dog. No, you're not. No, you're not. Any Q who knows what time it is with these brands and this burning flesh and these abusing these women is not going to be claimed. Now, they do do it because that's what the Christians do. We live a double life. Mm. Not all of them. I'm talking about there is a double life. I grew up like that. I grew up listening to. I remember my mama didn't even know iron black people, black radio and white radio. I say these terms because I don't believe in terms black and white um, into nations and stuff like that. But as far as what we call black and white back in the 70s, it was black radio, white radio and black people did not listen to white radio stations. So we didn't know about their music until MTV came out. When MTV came out and they showed you this, all of a sudden, mama's baby boy is looking at TV, watching Black Sabbath, Ozzy Osbourne, Iron Maid, because it's a video. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh my God, look at this Metallica. We got <laughs> into rock and roll music through television and we liked it. We was like, this stuff is, man, this stuff is hitting. <laughs> so these demons is flying through your house through MTV. Now, I'm not saying that BET didn't have no demons too, but these my, our white brothers and sisters got some, that gothic that gothic culture is no joke, but we got introduced to it through basically through television when it came to us and we didn't realize what is, man, what is, our, what is Black Sabbath? Black Sabbath, oh my God, <laughs> the Sabbath, Blacks, this is a satanic group. <laughs> but you're a little boy, you just loving the songs, like it sound cool, you know what I'm saying? So it's, 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 the, the races or what we call races in America, the enemy is come is coming to steal, kill, and destroy. He going to come at you if it's the fraternity, if it's the music, if it's this, if it's that. He going to find a way to get in there. And that's why it's the job of the parents. The parents are to equip and train. It says train up a child in the way she go. And when they grow old, they will not depart from it. So our job is trained. But you, this job is no joke with phones. And YouTube access and yeah. everybody, I teach algebra in schools. I was there when phones came into the schools and we had a big argument in the school about should kids, this was summer school class I was I was co um, facilitating. They was like, I was like, they can't learn algebra and have headphones in their ear listening to music. They was like, well, the principal said that, it, you know, since it's summer, I was like, no, it ain't going to work. <laughs> But they allowed it in, and now all the children, including mine, is got phones. And and I and I and I paid the price for letting my oldest two children not have phones. It's like we're talking tenth, eleventh grade now. These people, my children, caught hell with phones in the tenth and eleventh, like eleventh, twelve. People got they elementary kids with phones. Mm -hmm. So if if I had to fight a fight with my children to get them to understand that this is not of God. You cannot be concentrating on Netflix and reading, looking at Harry Potter. No, I'm preaching against that. But what about if your elementary baby is into that? So this is the war we're fighting. So when you say, well, what about the fraternities and sororities? Well, this is where the church is the standard. The church is supposed to be the standard bearers. And when the church has low standards, the body of Christ 
Now, the body of Christ is really believers. But when our fellowships have low standards, you the world is going to go nuts. So that's what has happened. And people are like, how did this happen? Part of it has to do with secret societies running the black churches. That's what has happened. They run them. So you're not, oh, man, Brother P been preaching like this for 20 years. Why hasn't he ever preached at my church? Because I'm not part of the Chitlin Circuit. <laughs> But guess what? I do preach in the prison mm. on Hampton University College. I was a dorm director for three years. Hey, I put in the work. You understand what I'm saying? But do anybody know about knowledge? But guess who knows what I did at Hampton University 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010? Everybody I came into contact with. That's why I wrote my book in 2009. It didn't come out to 2018. So then, then when you see people say, man, what, what, why ain't nobody calling you to do that? I said, this ain't no pat on the back ministry. You ain't about to get no pat on the back because they think this stuff is godly. I said, and I understand why, because they, they standing on, we're founded on Christian, Christian principle. They standing on that. So they can't see no connection to nothing else that's connected to something else. I said, well, in Genesis six, it talks about. Um, the sons of God coming, having children with the daughters of men and create a Nephilim. This just goes over everybody's head. So you'd be like, well, where's where's the Nephilim? Well, all your life you've been looking at him. You just didn't know it. Hercules, Clash of the Titans, Perseus. These are the Nephilim. So you don't understand um, Osiris, Isis, Horus. You don't know who Horus is. So you'd be like, well, who are these beings? Why they got these funny names? Why is Hercules my hero when his daddy is Zeus and his mama is some woman? How is that? Oh, that's a biblical story. Yeah, they just gave you, they're giving you their perspective of it. So Greek mythology is from the perspective of the fallen angels in Nephilim. Now, now do you understand what I'm saying? I hear so what in America. Doing. I hear it. In it kind of reminds me of a. Uh, you know, we talked about this, the Michael Heiser view of of the sun. That's of it. Yeah, because I know some people what? disagree on that, but I'm a I'm a huge Heiser fan myself. <laughs> I'm a Heiser fan too, and guess what? You introduced me to him. I've been on this a long time. <laughs> yeah, I've been on Heiser, uh, not Heiser. I've been on that knowledge a long time, but mm -hmm. I was introduced to Heiser through your channel. Oh, praise God. He got one video that's like, I think four hours. I think it's like four hours long. I saw the whole thing. Listen, the churches will not teach this stuff because, first of all, they have no knowledge of it. You're not going to learn this in seminary school for the most part because you have two different opinions. One opinion is like, you know, we, we interpret the scriptures differently. So one opinion is that the sons of God are real, are real men. Mm -hmm. And one opinion is the sons of God are the angels that fail. Mm -hmm. So these are two separate opinions. And um, I fall on the side of these are fallen angels. You know what I'm saying? And the people say, well, how can angels be like, man? I said, the Bible says, be careful how you deal with strangers for we entertain angels unaware. You don't know who you're talking to. Things happen. Angels, demons, it's a spiritual realm. Now, the enemy got their people all into this, this spiritual realm. But God's people, a lot of them are scared of it. It's spooky. But that's why you got to have the real Holy Spirit. That's why you have to have the right, the real gospel message, the real good news, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You have mm -hmm. to believe that he died on the cross. He rose from the dead, that he mm -hmm. sent the Holy Spirit in on the day of Pentecost and the church started. And this is how this, the, through the apostles and the, um, to make disciples, this is how this happened. And it said, this message is foolishness to the philosophers, to the Greeks. So look how you, you, you're preaching to God. So it ain't about talking about no rituals. It's about talking about the good news That's because right. those demons run them organizations and the gospel message is foolishness to the demons because they don't want to go to the lake of fire. They want to take as many people as they can with them to the lake of fire. And they do it through deception. So a lot of it's going to be good stuff. Community service, fellowship, mm -hmm. step show, all this is going to be good. But even the step shows has the demise. When ain't nobody stepping 
to no Hezekiah Walker. <laughs> they step They're into nut if you buck. buck. Mm -hmm. The spirit in that music is demonic. I made the music. My, my songs was crazy as Marilyn Manson. He got the devil dancing. Want to talk to Samson. I was making that music. And I'm so bold that I'm going to talk about crazy as Marilyn. Who Marilyn Manson? Church of Satan. But y'all step into that music. Because what? The kingdom of Satan is not divided. You ain't about to step with something that might deliver you. You ain't, if something is contrary, no. And even the music, we got gospel music that's just as hype as the secular worldly music. Mm -hmm. Now it's not, so, so you got to be able to, def gospel music, all of it's not meant for solemn assemblies. When you do an altar call or, or you up in there doing praise and worship, this ain't the time to put on the latest album by your favorite gospel rapper. Mm -hmm. This ain't the time and the place. His, his music is meant for, if you're doing a certain type of college ministry mm -hmm. or prison ministry or at the barbecue or at the roller skating rink, that's good. You got, yeah. you got a place for certain types of music, but you talking about coming to church. I'm not trying to see no DJ scratching and dropping that beat right after, um, offering. <laughs> chicka, 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 chicka. <laughs> Boom. Let's go. No. <laughs> and that's why I enjoy you. Cause you be singing. I say people don't forget all about hymns. They don't forget all about worship and praise music. When I got introduced to white worship, I say white, so-called white. When I got introduced <laughs> to their music, it changed CPM. me too because I was like, yeah, yeah uh, let me get, let me see how, how the songs, um, um, lift up my hands and um, offer in a praise. I was introduced to them by Sean Slaughter because he used to have worship and praise in his house, you know, saying, um, the, something to the King, but, but it was like, this is what worship and praise is. So when you listen to a lot of rap music, no, homie, that's not worship and praise music. That's some, maybe you can put it as reality or like storytelling or you try to get some information over to somebody. Yeah, but don't doctrine. think that this is work. Mm -hmm. This ain't worship. Not, I'm not talking about all of them. I'm talking about yeah. there's some songs that is worship and praise that you got a rapper on. But don't try to put all of it in there. Some of that stuff is just as hardcore. I said, but that it got a place at the barbecue, at the outreach ministry and the projects, and they trying to get out there and, and 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 get in where they fit in. But don't be trying to bring grandma sitting in the front row with her big hat on, and you gonna put the man. I'm just putting the speakers right here because the bass gonna hit when that song <laughs> when Bizzle hit. I love Bizzle, right? So when Bizzle thing hit, cause Bizzle did a song with Lauren Hill. Top, you you know that song. No, I don't know that one. I know Bizzle, though. Oh, my goodness. Bizzle changed the whole game. And Bizzle, he tell you he wasn't saved any friend. And I told people, I said, him coming at them dudes like that, um, like like Beef Records, when he first came out. I was like, man, come on, man. You know, but he changed. And then he lined up. But, but I tell you, he just got saved. He said, I won't even really save when I did them <laughs> records about. But people didn't give, people didn't want to give him. There's only one person who gave him a chance. At it, uh, not one person, but a couple of them. But his name, his name is Alex Pagani. Alex Pagani was a DJ, and Alex Pagani was like, "Yeah, he young. He just coming into this. He's not really, you know, there yet." And he, he trying to defend the faith by doing a beef record against, you know, Jay Z and, um, not Biggie. What's the, um, what's the dude from Florida? Rick Ross. Rick Ross. So he he came at Jay Z, then he came at Rick Ross, and it was like, man, it's just like a, a battle, a beef record, but. He, that's where he was at, period. But then you saw him start to evolve and change and grow God over money. I was like, yeah, I like that. And then my boy, who I did an album with, Lavazier, hooked up with him. And it, and then they grew in Dayton. But some of the stuff be over the top. So so I've been there from the beginning of that. I, I got a record, Lecrae is a capital. See, people mm -hmm. don't understand. In, yeah. in gospel music, yeah. there's many... Gospel music has secret societies from the top to the bottom. I did a record on SoundCloud, and it's not about Lecrae. It was just asking the question, are you still about this? Because, my brother, I know you don't know who are. Do you have an understanding of what Apollo really is? And most likely you don't, and you don't care. But I see you got that diamond and that K on your arm, just like I got this Omega brand on my arm. You ain't going to say nothing about that. 
but you be stepping. So a lot of guys be like, no, I'm not holding the crate to no standard of holiness and righteousness if that's not who he is. But if I ever get to meet him, I'm going to be able to do what? Chop it up with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm not mad at the brother or any other brother who's a Mason or a Cap or Q. But when we get together, you might look at my video. That's not me, but that is me. But if we ever meet and talk, if we chop it up. But like, okay, I'm going to meet you where you at, not where I'm at. I'm not going to expect you to be on what I'm on. I've been on this for 20 years <laughs> and, and, and seeing it happen in front of my face. Just like when I was in the dope house, watching the crack smokers transform in my face. Oh, this is demonic. You, I smoked weed. I drank liquor and, and, and I seen people transform liquor, but ain't no transformation like crack. It, oh, it is crystal meth. But that's mm -hmm. what I, if the brother starts smoking crystal meth, it's a wrap. I work in the prison in Houston. Them dudes be on them opiates and all that stuff like that. White guys in prison, big time. So you'd be like, well, what are these drugs? Pharmacia, sort. this is sorcery. But people only think of sorcery and witchcraft as Harry Potter. They, they were like, oh yeah, that's witchcraft. Nah, the Bible says... Um, when it was talking, rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. Not doing the will of God is witchcraft. Mm -hmm. So if you somewhere with an altar and altars are for um, doing sacrifices to gods. And if you got an altar and you ain't sacri and your sacrifice isn't praise to the most high in the name of Jesus. What are you sacrificing to? So what are you dedicating you yourself to? <laughs> These rituals mm. that people say, mm. well, they're not. And I asked Shahid the same question. So this might sound a little familiar. But from your knowledge, do the organizations still practice these rituals? Or can you get in the orgs without doing some form of a ritual? From my knowledge, you're not a member if you don't do the ritual. But the ritual is not. Let me do, let me take a sip of this here mm -hmm. of tea. <laughs> <laughs> It don't matter if you pledge for five weeks, three months, or whatever. If you don't take the oath, you're not a member. Mm. You're not in. Yeah. You could be paper and not have done nothing but studied the little material and got read in and took the oath. You are a member. So the rituals in some chapters is treated very seriously. In other chapters, it might not be treated as seriously, but it's not, they rush, they run through that thing. That's the end of your, it's, it's usually the end of your pledge process. So it's not like you're doing a ritual online. All you're doing, if you're going underground, you're just pledging. You're just being whipped into a unit of oneness. Are you following what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, yeah. So as far as what the rituals, like people pay so much attention to these people, Christians, people don't read their own Bible. That's right. They don't care. You go to church, you'd be like, um, most people in church, they cannot put together Jesus Christ as the Passover lamb and go see him in the 10th plague. When they're doing that Passover and they're putting that blood on the doorpost, this is a prophetic plague of our Savior. But most people do understand the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ on the cross. But they can't go in the Old Testament because their, their teachers and their preachers would not bring them into that type of knowledge. It's the same with the rituals. Ain't nobody going into them rituals and break. Well, I do. I'm, But I don't go in, the, like, say the ritual is 8, 9, 15. I'm not about to go through that mess. But I read the whole thing. And the parts that I deal with are the parts that are diametrically opposed to my faith. Mm -hmm. So now you say, well, what is that in Omega Sapphire? It is the universal brotherhood and the fatherhood of God. Right. And that's part of your oath. Are these men are in agreement with this? This is not defined by your mega sapphire. This is a term that comes from, um, from Freemasonry and it's ecumenical. It's bigger than Freemasonry. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is that all gods are one. Yeah. And in Freemasonry, it's one in the great architect of the universe. But in 
in the ecumenical world, it's the interfaith movement. It's the ecumenical movement. It don't matter what your religion is. As long as y'all all come together. And it, it seems like right now they're moving to this all coming together underneath the Vatican. But who knows how it's going to all end up. But we already got the organizations in place. This is the inner faith thing. So we're going to put aside our differences and all come together in the name of love. Now, the question is, how does the Bible define love? The Bible says no greater love than a man lay down his life for a friend. And the context is Jesus Christ laying down his life and picking mm -hmm. it up again. Mm -hmm. The context of love, the greatest love of all is Jesus Christ and shed blood on Calvary. And that blood is what will make the difference between you and them devils. Because demons don't want nothing to do with the ultimate sacrifice. Kenneth Copeland made a statement one time. He's like, if that was all it took to say, to, to get to, to cover your say, I could have did that. No, you couldn't have because <laughs> Jesus was born of a virgin. Your mama was born of a virgin. <laughs> he said, said you're going to skip all over that virgin birth part. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. this is what separates the Christians. You trying to say you could die on the cross and it cover everybody. No, you don't. Jesus came from what they call the immaculate conception. So this is the Holy Spirit coming upon Mary and she conceived, not with passion, but the seed was placed in her. Who the seed? The seed was God. So you'd be like, so this is the God man that's about to come up. And why did he had to come like that? Because he was going to be the Passover lamb. That was, That's why in the Old Testament, you can find the gospel message. The good news is in the Old Testament, but it worked. It walked itself out in the Gospels. So he actually everything they was talking about in the plagues and and um. In the 10th plague with the blood on the doorpost actually got walked out by Jesus. He was fulfilling all of these prophetic things that happened in mm -hmm. the Exodus. So he goes and does that. And who else has done that? Nobody. <laughs> 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 to this day, nobody has ever done all the fulfillment. So now they come and twist it up again and say, oh, he fulfilling all of those things because they wrote it after it happened. Yeah, that would be nice, but we do have this documentation that these books are old. And, mm -hmm. and thank God for the Ethiopians and the Dead Sea Scrolls. <laughs> these things are old, so we have old documents that show. But we don't need no document. You don't need no documents when his spirit convicts you of sin and you turn from your wicked way. See, a man, salvation is the greatest gift. Like, you know, Whitney Houston sing the song, I found the greatest love, love of all. all. <laughs> Only if is Jesus Christ. See, that song said, I found the greatest love of all inside of me. Yeah, if it was Jesus. Right. Jesus is the greatest gift of all. The greatest story ever told. So the greatest love of all is that he came down, gave up that glory taught amongst men, was seen amongst men, and gave it up. He says, there ain't no man kill me. I laid down my life. Mm -hmm. And then be like, he committed suicide. No, he didn't. <laughs> he be like, so he committed suicide. But people just will, will do stuff to sound good because they can say that. Oh, he committed suicide. I laid down my life. I pick it up again. No, he was showing you that that power working through him, he's one with it. Now, if you try to explain, if you try to understand, you're going to get a headache. You're going to get a headache trying to understand the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Don't get no headache on it. Just know that if the power of the Holy Spirit shows up, Jesus and the Heavenly Father is all in it. If you try to be like, oh, because you can build a whole religion based upon the scriptures where the Heavenly Father is separated from Jesus. You can build a whole religion around those scriptures. But in the context of it all, the Father and the Son are one. The Lord our God is one and is one with the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus said, Father, make them one as we are one. They'd be like, how can I be one with Jesus and God? How can I be one with him? You must, in order to see the kingdom, in order to see the kingdom of God, you must be born again. Mm -hmm. That's how you become one. And everybody be claiming they born again. But born again is it, it's seen over time. 
So you may say you're born again today. I'm going to talk to you in five years. See if you're still born. And it ain't about what you're saying. It's going to be about what you did. did so did just you to clarify, because I know mm -hmm. some of my people in the live chat. Are you Trinitarian? <laughs> I know that they're probably like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Trinitarian. Mm -hmm. I'm oneness. I'm whatever you want me to be. But I'm the scriptures. See, okay. because a lot of a lot of that is semantics. And you'll get people arguing for their church, their Trinity church, their oneness church. I ain't with none. This is what Jesus told told them. I want to say Jesus. The, the, the figure of a man came up to Joshua and Joshua said, who you with? He said, I ain't with none of y'all. But take your shoes off your feet because you're standing on holy ground. And then he recognized who was talking to him was God. The same thing with Moses in the burning bush. So to try to understand and define the per, 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 perplexities of the most high in his relationship with his son, he defined it in the Bible. And he said he is the visible of the invisible in Colossians, I believe, 115. And he said we're one. He said the father and the son are one. And then he said the father, son and the Holy Spirit. So I can give you your trinity. The father, the son and the Holy Ghost. It's right there. I can give you the oneness. The Lord our God is one, the Shema. That's why it's so hard for Jews to come into the faith because people are so hard on, oh, he's Trinity. Oh, he's oneness. I can show you the three in one, and I can show you the Lord our God is one in the Shema. It all meshes together. So I'm not fighting no oneness, nothing, unless you're in a cult that's saying, because there is a oneness cult. That says not only of that God is one and all of them is the same thing, but they also say you got to be baptized in the name of Jesus, evidenced by speaking in tongues. See, and if you don't, you ain't in their cult. Uh oh. Uh oh, I think we lost them again. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Y'all give me a one in the live chat if you can hear me, but you can't hear Brother P. Give me a one in the live chat. Give me one in the live chat if you can hear me. He might have got another call. Can y'all hear me? Well, okay, so Bill Clemens can hear me. They can hear me, Brother P. I don't know if they can hear you anymore. Y'all let me know. Can y'all hear both of us or just one of us? Can you hear both of us or just one of us? Lost his audio. Okay. All right. We'll wait on him to get back. We don't went from fraternities and Freemasonry. Now we talk about the Trinity. So can you hear me now? You can't hear me. I can't, I can't hear you either. Do you want to try to go out and come back in? You try to go out and come back in. How, how about this? I'll take you out. All right, we'll wait on him to come back. And anybody in the live chat got questions? Only you, he's coming back. Let me see. Okay, yeah, he'll come back in just a second. And we'll get back to that because we, we want to clarify. I'm not saying that, you know, I have a lot of guests on here. I want to get people's experience. You know, we're probably going to not agree on everything, but okay, let's see. You bet. Check okay, one, I can hear you now. I can hear you Boom. now. Okay, so you you don't have a strong stance on Trinitarian Trinity Trinity or oneness. I am a staunch Trinitarian. I believe that the Trinity is uh that's I believe that's true. I think that the Bible teaches that Jesus, God the Father, and God the Son are co-eternal, co-equal, and distinct from one another. Um, that is what I believe. So just wanted to put that out there. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I believe everything you just said. Okay. okay. But I, I just I believe they're one too. I just and when I say they're one, I don't say they're one out of nothing, out of no doctrine. Mm -hmm. I say the Lord our God is one. And when he says the Father and the Son are one, that's my oneness. My oneness ain't based upon a denomination. There's denominations that have all kind of by law. See, th this is crazy how they say we're not under the law, but a church will have a million bylaws. 
we not under the law, but we under the bylaws. I'm like, no, we not under the law or your bylaws. I said, because his laws are written on the inside. And people say, what does it mean for the law of God to be written inside? It means that when you get Christ for real, you going to know right from wrong. You're going to know when you cheating on somebody. You're going to know when you lying to somebody and ain't nobody going to have. You ain't got to read a book. See, imagine somebody, people was in Christ and they couldn't read. You be like, how can a man be in Christ because he can't read? Because God circumcised them. Man circumcised the flesh. God circumcised the heart. And that's why he knows right from wrong. That's why I don't get into no then arguments over what people believe about how they define the Heavenly Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Because I know all of them are power are connected to the most high. So I say, I just thank God that I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Fair <laughs> I enough, just fair. Thank <laughs> So, I, so, 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 so I understand. So, so I won't, yeah. I won't fight. I, I mean, I, I fought on a lot of people. I, you got to understand that I come from the dope house and all them different houses of repute. I come from all of that foolishness to being saved and being filled with the Holy Ghost and then reading the Bible. I had all that first being told where to go and then read the Bible and looked around and saw a hundred different churches. I said, uh uh. <laughs> God is not the author of confusion. So uh, now, 20 years ago, I'm in the rap thing too. I'm with Sean Slaughter and all these different rappers in New York, and I'm from the South. So I'm in it. So all of a sudden, this is when I learned about Lecrae. This is in 2001. Lecrae, Apostle on um, BBJ, and all these. I didn't know nothing about B -B a Pentecostal. He <laughs> called me. He called, he called me about a month ago. Hit me up on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? He's still doing his thing. But I learned about Lecrae, and I had the Shali, um, Shalem and all Shalem, of them. Yeah. I, I didn't know what Calvinism was. I didn't know what Reformed theology. I didn't know any of these things. I had to learn that post getting saved. Mm -hmm. You understand? Now, post reading the Bible. I don't have no seminary degree or anything, but I do got a Bible degree. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so when they threw then they came at me with things, I used to be like, hold up, brother, because some Calvinists, not all of them, some Calvinists are cessationists. And I used to tell people, I said, hold up, brother, let me let me show you something. And, and some are not. So I said, you can't say all of them are this or that. You have ones who believe in the gifts of the spirit and ones who don't believe in it. I said, but the ones who don't believe in it. And the continuation of the gifts of the spirit are some of the biggest rappers and some of the biggest preachers and most influencers, the influencers. So I was like, I looked at people that was like, um, Lecrae and them was big on this was ambassador and all of them. I met all these guys. They was big on um, MacArthur. Got yeah. my Mac back in the back of my backpack, the Johnny Mac. They was big <laughs> on that. I didn't even know. I didn't know what none of this was. And my crew was not part of that. This is in 2001. So I'm like, man, what are they talking about? What is that? So I follow, I started to follow John MacArthur. Like, like I'm, I want to know yeah. what you believe. I want to know because I love a lot of his preaching. In yeah. fact, he has a preaching on Freemasonry. My best friend, who's a former alpha, is a follower of, of John MacArthur's ministry. But one day, John MacArthur made a statement about the mark of the beast. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know. Exactly. I got a. I wrote. I wrote a song about that right there, and I said, mm -mm. <laughs> "No, sir." I said, "How do you write a whole study Bible? Read Revelations 13, and don't read Revelations for, and don't get down with Revelation 14 that says that when you take the mark." wrath will come upon you it don't say it's gonna come upon you a week later or t it says i don't know the exact part in john 14 but, so i said how can he come with that 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 so but it was other reformed theology guys who came against that so i just backed out of that whole thing i said <laughs> man he tripping you know what i'm saying so that that's the that's the, a couple of things and then i dealt with your boy um eric mason now I didn't oh, deal I love, with I love Pastor Mason. <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't deal with him. I knew one of the brothers who used to be with him. He's on he's big time on YouTube, Barry and TV. Mm -hmm. 
I looked at my channel on YouTube the other day. I'm just, you know, how you look through your YouTube channel. This is two two days ago. He got one of my videos on his. He be having seven hour shows, right? I I turned to his show and it's my video. Oh, and it's wow. about it's, it's about Stephen Darby. It's a video I did about Stephen Darby and what he got into with um, TB Joshua and all this stuff he got into in Africa. And I was like, you know, a lot of people just don't understand this stuff. I said, I know Nigeria. You understand? So I'm looking at my video. So he, I didn't know how you could call into these things. He hit me with the next thing you know, I'm on his show. Oh, you are on TV? I was on Berean TV two nights ago. Guess what? The video gone. Oh wow! Okay, wow. Because a lot of guys get in trouble. It's 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 funny on YouTube now. If you use somebody else's video, or you say something, dudes can just flag your channel. So I guess something like that happened. But brother P was up on there chopping it up, and believe me, dudes ain't trying to hit. And Berean no stuff, but Berean just wild. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not into arguing. It ain't my style. Like I'm, I'm like, you gonna believe what you gonna believe. I, yeah. One of my, one of my mentors in the faith was William Skinner Bell, and William Skinner Bell used to be a vampire, a Catholic priest. He wrote the book Lucifer Dethroned. This is who I talked to. This guy on the phone. This guy was. I was following this guy back in, um, twenty years ago, or maybe fifty. I brought, I brought, I bought his book Lucifer Dethroned. I was like, ain't nobody can tell nobody nothing when they read this book because uh, people just don't believe that there's vampires sucking blood, drinking blood. This is a culture in America, but it's like, it don't even exist to the church world. He was one of them amongst other things trained by a real Satanist. He went through the Mormon church. So when people talk about cults, there used to be a guy who wrote a book, the kingdom of cults. I read that oh, book Walter from cover. Martin. I, yeah. Walter yeah. Martin's book. I read from cover to this is my first year in the faith. This is how I can like people talk about going to seminary school. No, the, the rapper who I was with, Sean Slaughter, Alvin Slaughter's son. I moved in with him into his basement. And we was a part of a straight cult. Destiny Worship Center. I was living with the co-pastor. I was a baby Christian. Sean used to stop by the house. He was the 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 um the guy who do the sound. Sean would drop off books. One of the books he dropped, he would and and he would drop the book off to me. He dropped the kingdom of, um he didn't drop the kingdom of cults, he would drop the generals of the faith, things like that. I would read the book in two three because I'm a avid reader. So I would read the book in two, three days. I give it back to him. He's like, You read that already? I said, yeah, man. I read the whole new text. When I got saved, when I got them devils cast out of me, by not, this this is a divine appointment. That's what the, the man said, pa Pastor Nunzia. I went home and read the whole New Testament in, I think, two and a half days. But I couldn't read the Bible before that. When I say I couldn't read it, I would read one verse and <laughs> I'd be knocked to the is out. You understand what I'm saying? When he laid hands on me and his wife prayed for me, it must have scared them people to death. Because, see, this is before I denounce. You understand? This is this is me fresh out going to New York. I want to do the Christian thing. And these people prayed for me. And I don't know what happened in that thing that day. But let me tell you something. I was I got up off that floor and I heard the word say, go get that little Bible and find out. Now listen to this. God didn't tell me to go to the pastor. It was a revival. Go tell him your name and follow him back to London. His ministry was in London and become his disciple. I was told to go. I had a little Bible that was highlighted. They gave it to me. Um, Destiny Worship Center gave. See, you can learn stuff in a cult. I learned because I learned what not to deal with. When I was a dope punk, I learned from it. When I was dealing with prostitutes, I learned from dealing with that. So you can learn things when you're going through. And in the cult, I learned how not to be a part of another one. Gotcha. But I received the ability to read the Bible without getting sleepy. And I read the whole book of Matthews that night. The next night, Mark. The next night, Luke. The next night, the Acts, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. I rolled through the New Testament and then started on the Old Testament, Genesis. When I finished with it, I was like, oh, my God, I'm 33 years, 34. I, I got a college degree. 
I've read thousands of books. I've never read this one. I was raised in the church. What did I just read? <laughs> what did I just read? A donkey literally talked to a man in Numbers 22. Could you imagine me sitting there being in church all my life not knowing that a donkey spoke to a man? Balaam, the false prophet. And I'm like, mm -hmm. why you why you be me? <laughs> You know, don't don't you see that angel standing right there? I'm saying, I'm saying, where was this part of my Christian education? So what I'm trying to say is, I, I, I the Bible used to put me to sleep. It yeah. don't put me to sleep no more. So I read the whole Bible. That's why I know it might upset you and a lot of other people when I get on things like the apocrypha and things like that. But understand, I didn't just come into that knowledge or come into those books out of nowhere. I read the Bible and and I was introduced. I don't know how I got to a 1611 um, King James Bible. But I was like, man, this is a 1611 King. When did they take this out? The 1800s. So I was like, boom. I read the book of Enoch. I, I read not all of them. Some of them are crazy. I read Enoch 1, translation by R.H. Charles. When I read it, I was like, I'm in a prison overnight. I read the whole thing and I said, um, hold up. That didn't contradict the Bible. Let me read it again with a highlighter. I read the whole Bible, Enoch one again with a highlighter. And I said, that didn't contradict the Bible. So when I finished with that, I was like, I read the whole book of Jubilees. I said, mm -mm, something wrong. I went to start researching and finding out who else is on this. That's why when, when I saw you with Heisler, I came to all of them conclusions before that. I was yeah. like, man. Well, because when it comes to the Apocrypha, and I actually did a live stream on it um, not too, well, I don't know, probably about a year ago now. Yeah, I'm still of, um, I still don't, I don't consider it um, inspired, but I do understand that Christians, some Christians like to read it for informational purposes and all that. So, but before, because I know, I know it's about time to let you go, but I did, I just mm. wanted to ask you like. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. <laughs> Don't be scared of Maccabees. That's where Hanukkah come from. I'm, I'm, I'm not scared of it. Don't, scared. don't be, don't I, let I just, nobody. <laughs> how, how is it? You got a college degree? I do. I do. I never understood, not you, uh -huh. master's degrees, PhDs. Do you know how many books we got to read to get PhD? I do not. A master's degree. I never understood how Christians will say, well, I ain't, I ain't touching that mess. But they touch this. No, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about people yeah. who got their master's degrees it's and they're Christians. Yeah. I'm saying it's just a book because if it's not of God, and this is the last thing I'm going to say on that. In the very first book of the Apocrypha is a book called Ezra's, which is the prophet Ezra, or, mm -hmm. or the better word, the scribe, the scribe Ezra. It ain't just talking about no history. It is God speaking. The, and the Lord God said, blah, blah. And I tell people either this is a complete lie or God is talking, but I guarantee it's not both. And that's, I think that's a decision like that every individual will have to make because I'm not just trusting people telling me that something's not of God. You know what I'm saying? I know the satanic Bible is not of God. I know Alistair Crowley stuff is not of God. I picked up the necromancer book and I remember reading the first page of it. I was a Christian. I remember reading that first. It had a warning. Many men have lost their minds reading this book and trying to do these rituals. Bloop closed it and got up out of there. <laughs> it sounds so like you made the right choice. No, yes, I did. You know what? We, we can have another whole conversation about the apocalypse. I think it's okay for Christians to talk about that kind of stuff. Amen. I really do. Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't consider it inspired. Even I've heard uh, Michael... Heiser talk about Enoch. Does he think it's inspired? No. Does he think it's helpful? And um, has it, it sounds like it's impacted how he looks at the scriptures, even though he doesn't consider it scripture. But that's an entirely different conversation. I wanted to pick your brain some more about Freemasonry before we Come go. I know that that's the main reason why people want to watch tonight. I know we went all over it's the place. Not, it's not of God. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do I it. I agree. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Come on, come with it. Come but, with it. Okay. How how do you define um Freemasonry and what specifically is Prince Hall Freemasonry? All right. 
there's all kinds of masonry. Mm -hmm. The first masonry, the OG masonry is brick masonry and stone masonry, which is the real masonry. The speculative masonry is what you have when they take those tools from real masonry for building, you know, cathedrals, mm -hmm. houses and all that. And they give their own definitions to these tools. I am so glad you said that because I actually have two um i have two screens about this okay so there's two types of there were originally two different types of masonry right so brother mm. p kind of already brought that out so there's operative freemasonry and i a lot of the stuff that i got i got from um, ron Rhodes' book reasoning from the scriptures if anybody wants a book on how to share your faith with your friends who are masons family members who are masons um whether they're christian or not this is an excellent resource um, but it talks about how operative masonry was not a religious, it, it wasn't a religion, it wasn't a cult, it was actually about building cathedrals and churches. So it says working masons engaged in actual construction work up through the 17th century. Masons built churches and cathedrals in Europe. Um, they did form guilds. The guilds formed or discussed philosophy, politics, religion, etc. And there weren't any secret rituals or ceremonies or anything like that. But then in 1717, it, it switched from a physical building to a spiritual temple that they are constructing. So I did just want to throw that out there. All right, go ahead. Take it away, Brother P. Even, even the building of those cathedrals could be a problem because secrets and stuff have been hidden in the shapes of those buildings. Gargoyles and stuff all on the buildings and stuff. So... Think about it, that that mainly was the Catholic Church doing that thing. The, the Roman Catholic Church having those cathedrals built. So when you have the Inquisitions and all these things, what were these people doing? The Anabaptists and all that. These people was, we ain't going to baptize no, no children. And they died because of that stance. And these people came to America. That's, that's the Mennonite and Amish communities that we have over here. They ran from that. So there's still a problem with that type of masonry. In fact, that they was building something called the church mm. building, because this is the same problem we deal with today. What is the church? The church ain't no building. It's just that the church, the body of Christ meets in these buildings and the building don't got to be no cathedral. It could be your house. It could be your local. Like if you ever saw a little house on the prairie, there was one mm -hmm. local building that everybody went to for fellowship and that's how you it was now you got a billion of but you talking a system where there's one building one cathedral in that whole thing and if you didn't get down with it you got a problem you see what i'm saying so even in that there's issues it's just that in the 1700s this is where like you said it become a different thing because mm -hmm. you have men rewriting rituals or mm -hmm. writing rituals. Albert Pike is supposedly responsible for writing all of the Scottish Rite rituals. And his book, Morals and Dogma, is off the chain. So Which, they define these rituals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people try question. to guess. Mm -hmm. Come on with From, it. Uh, I, I don't know if it's Aisha or Aisha. She says, what's the highest degree? Which degree did he go to? Now, Brother P, you are never a Freemason, right? No. Just to clarify. But... Okay, you just talked about Scottish right, and I know a lot of people think that all Freemasonry is is about degrees, and I don't think that's quite accurate, right? Because Scottish right is one form of Freemasonry, but then there's also right. York right, where there aren't the they're not technically degrees, right? Like they're different chapters. No, it's degrees. It's fourteen degrees. One oh, one yeah, is thirty. Mm -hmm. okay. This side, this they both the same. Mm -hmm. This side is 32 degrees to the top. This side, I believe, is 14. Mm -hmm. But they oh, both meet at the same place. They meet at the all-seeing eye, which is the eye of Osiris. Mm -hmm. see, th see, this is the part that comes back to Greek. Osiris, the eye of Osiris. Who is Osiris? I, Osiris, the counterpart in the Greek culture, is Zeus. Zeus is Minerva's daddy. So let's go. Zeus, Osiris, Jupiter. Bell, all the same thing. So the question is, okay, if that's it, then who is Zeus? Who is Osiris? It ain't Jesus. It ain't the most high. It ain't Yah. It ain't Yahweh. It's Baal. It's Satan. It's the devil. 
It is bail, specifically in the York Rite, because that's where you see the name Jabulon. I don't think that's a Scottish Rite thing. It's a York Rite thing. So it's like three gods meshed into one. Bail. Yeah. When you see that word bail, this is, forget the Masons. Let's go back to our word of God and our prophet Elijah. Elijah went up against the prophets of Baal and had a battle and won and ran when Queen Jezebel made that decree over his life. You'd be like, so people say you got a Jezebel spirit. Jezebel dead. No, it's not her spirit you got. It's the spirit she was worshiping. What was Jezebel worshiping? Baal. The prophets of Baal and Jezebel was worshiping this Canaanite God. So where did he go? Underground, he came up through masonry. And he's part of the system. So when you can't recognize that, like like Jeho Jehovah Jireh, my provider, Jehovah Nee. You know, we got all them names. God got all those names. Guess what? The devil got a bunch of names too. And it, it ain't it ain't fair to just say the devil is devils. It's many fallen angels with many names, and they they've created their own religions and philosophies all over the world. The Bible says. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, but narrow is the way that leadeth to eternal life. Listen to the next line. And few find it. You, you there be that find it. I only talk to you for an hour and a half. Let me tell you something, sister. Do not take for granted when you can communicate with a brother or sister freely. Mm -hmm. But when you have that resist, even though we had di we've had disagreements, the disagreements we had didn't stop us from fellowshipping with each other. Right, right. But you have people who will get, I'm talking, mm, no, no, get me off this line right now. We're going to fight in the name of Jesus and the name of people will kill each other. It's not the spirit of Christ. So you'd be like, well, what is, is the spirit of Christ a nice thing? No, it, you can have, you can have, get mad and everything. But no, there's a spirit of Christ that when the body of Christ meets the body of Christ, they recognize each other. That don't mean we got to believe all the same stuff. We just recognize mm. when when the body of the Antichrist steps up to the plate, it's it's going to be a war. Yeah, it's going to be. A, agree. Yeah, as long as we agree on the essentials, you know what I'm saying. And I think that yeah. that goes back to like even some of these fraternities and sororities, like people end up don't from from what I've notice talking to them on TikTok and on different um platforms a lot of them really don't know the gospel there they they just they know greek life they know their process they don't understand what we mean when we say this is not a godly thing that you're participating in so some people i've actually been able to like talk about and explain what i'm saying but a lot of them of course aren't open to it but yeah like they don't they don't know the essentials so of course they don't understand why what they're doing in these rituals totally goes against scripture right and and that's the part about wisdom understanding the wise man win of souls when you step into a person you're going to have to see where they're at in christ even though they're claiming they're christian they might not be born again and if you hold them to some yeah. type of christian standard when they they just saying they're christian probably because they were like me i was raised in a christian home mm -hmm. But I went the way of the prodigal son. I went into riotous living. So when I was out there underneath my three fraternities and headed toward, I went to the nation of Islam. I went to, when I was out there doing that thing, you couldn't tell me nothing. But I heard people say things. But at that time, I was in the middle of this and I didn't have no real foundation of the word of God. Yeah. So like you might have that as a young lady i didn't have that as a young man so but I, I knew church i knew first sunday was communion and we about to get in here with these little crackers and this juice it's, and it's about to it's go ritual. down it's tradition do you, how do you think i felt when i got saved sanctified filled the holy ghost and went to a church and they had communion on third sunday <laughs> oh, no it is, it's supposed to be on first sunday oh snap you can have that okay so me and you on this live is that communion are we breaking bread 
I, well, yeah, I guess technically, yes, I guess. Where two or three are gathered in his name, he's in the midst. That's right. When God's people come together, Psalms 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow. Devils are fleeing in all directions. When the saints come, now one person can put a thought, one person in Christ can put a thousand of these spirits to flight. But two, because it's a power. That's why a man should leave his father and mother, cleave to his wife, and then to become one flesh. If this union is in Christ, the enemy can't do nothing. In fact, it's a Holy Spirit union there that drives devils away. That's why it says, be what? Do not be unequally yoked. But guess what? If you're unequally yoked, guess what? God got something for that too. So if you marry an old crazy cute dog who don't love Jesus and love partying with the bros and you a believer and you decide to stay with them, guess what the Bible said? The believing wife sanctifies the unbelieving husband and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So you want to marry that girl from the strip club knowing she ain't right, but she love you and you love her and y'all but to have some problems. But if you stay together and said the believing husband sanctifies the uh, why? Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And that even works in a marriage. But the first advice is to do what? Be not unequally yoked. Don't do it. But the Bible got a lot of don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> but if you do do it, there's still what? Hope. There's still hope. So when I step to a fraternity or sorority member, whatever the case may be, instead of going to war with you, what about if I treat you to lunch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if I treat you to a dinner? We're going to chop it up. And then you might think about the things I said. But what if I just came at you with the guns out? It's war yeah. off the yeah. rip. Because mm. nobody likes to be told that something that they love is wrong or could have some The issues. devil. Yeah. yeah. What you're doing is the devil. You'd be like, huh? No, I love what I'm doing. Yeah. Because you, I didn't know I was a Satan worshiper. See, the, the one thing about a Christian, when they get off into the world like I was, and I love Jesus, but I got off into this thing. I never thought when I was out there and I was out there, I never thought I was worshiping the devil. But when I came face to face and who I really was, I looked down at my shirt on New Year's Eve 2001. I was headed to the club that night, ended up in the church, and he started preaching real good. And I looked down at my shirt and I had a party shirt on. It One of them old school party shirts with the dragons all over it. And I got so shamed, but I knew, oh, snap, I, I consider the dragon Satan. I was like, oh, snap, I'm serving Satan. Because my music is hardcore, crazy, killing, dope, drug, dip. I am fraternity abusing these women. Oh, I'm not. I'm, God, I forgive me. I repent. I'm a change. And it was a year later, I would be a different guy. And my wife never knew me as that man. That's my, my wife. She hear this stuff. She'd be like, but she, you know, my wife never knew me as a cute dog. So, but, but she was there when the transformation, my wife was my Sunday school teacher. So I never read the Bible when I met her. Wow. She knew, I didn't know anything. So, but, wow. but God blessed me. And he, and now, you know what I'm saying? I love, I'm telling you, like, it's for real, for real. And my son, he's at Prairie View right now in Texas. We're in South Carolina. I got nine more kids to go. My baby is two years old. He is the last I'm going to invite you to an all-white party. You'd be like, Brother P, why is it an all-white party? Because when I potty train this 10th kid, it's going to be a party. <laughs> <laughs> no more diapers. No more baby wipes. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> that is something to celebrate. I know. I know. Exactly pledging. So from. pledging the fraternities is just an, a copycat or a counterfeit of mothers, fathers, and children. That's all it is. It's a counterfeit of the church being spiritual um, mentors and disciples. So it copies that system. So when you get the, when you think you know patience now, you don't know it until you get a wife or get a husband. You're going to learn something in marriage that you can't learn from a book. And you're going to learn to, oh, I got to learn patience dealing with this woman. 
And then after that, God going to give you another level. He going to give you a kid. You can't beat the kid. You end up in jail or what. But if you learn to deal with that kid, that's another level of patience that you're going to learn. And and that's when you when you have your first kid, you'll be like, oh, snap it. My mom and dad did the best they could. But I now understand they took care of me for four or five years when I couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. You know what? Honor thy father and mother in our days. It's a reason why no matter what they did, they did the best they could. But it said honor them and your days will be long. It's with a promise. So the fraternities have those aspects in it, but they're out of order. They're not in the they copy the things of God into the fraternity system. But because God got principles that are awesome, but it's out of order. It's the wrong type of soul ties. My son is my son and I'm discipling him. But at a certain point, you got to cut that tie. Let him go. He got to get become man. He can't become no man with you over him like that. Why I'm going to sit in your church for 20, 30 years on that pew and you never release me. Uh uh. Spread out, saints. <laughs> There's a whole lot out here to get. So the harvest field is white. <laughs> Spread well, out, I'm saints. I'm going to ask you one more thing before I get to Joseph Earl, because Joseph has been asking this question since two, two hours and five minutes ago. So we're going to get to it. But now I've almost forgot my question. Oh, Joseph is up in here. I know Joseph. You know Joseph, yeah. Is he in the uh, BGLU, ex BGLO union? Yeah, he in the e ex BGLO union. Okay. I don't know him personally. I just know him from the union. Oh, now I remember what I was going to ask you. So I know earlier you said that um, in the organizations they worship the founders. I do see that there is a lot of veneration. I guess maybe that's a better word for the founders. But veneration. I but I wonder if um, some people will say, well, no, we don't worship the founders. We we hold them in high respect and high regard. I don't know because, you know, I, I've never gone through ritual. I'm not in an organization. So is there actual worshiping of the founders or is it more so veneration? It is veneration. And it's the same veneration that you find in the churches and the mosque and the Hindu temples of the, the leadership. Some of it is honor, but a lot of it is worship mm -hmm. and 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 that's why you can't put a blanket on all of them mm -hmm. but some of the stuff we do in the name of the founders or in the name of the pastors is not godly so because a, a, a founder is a creature a pastor is a creature the bible says because they worship the creature rather than the creator i turned them over to a reprobate mind that's why so many members in church when they get out of hand with putting this person on a pedestal they find themselves doing things they would have never done they don't understand you put him in the place of god or her in the place of god you are going to fall into um romans one and you about to have a reprobate mind that's why we have all these scandals in the church it's because of you venerating a little bit too much <laughs> 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 veneration <laughs> leads to entanglements. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. they, I'm going to tell you right now. They love the founders. They love the you founders. You go to, okay, wait, you, is your daddy still living? Mm-hmm. Okay, now watch it. Your daddy a Christian? Yes. Do you go to the same church as your daddy? No. Now watch this. So my daughter is over here, and that man is her pastor. That's my daughter. Who is that woman's covering? That pastor or that father? Should it's the, the daddy. Yeah. It, it's the daddy. So, and why is it the daddy? Because God made it that way. He made fathers the covering of their wives and the children underneath that thing. Now we got children coming from under their father's protection. Our daughters are protected by us because, see, I got five daughters, right? I changed them diapers. <laughs> Me. So you think I'm gonna let any Negro and I include <laughs> I include white, Chinese, everything in the term Negro, step to my house and mess with my daughter and try to do something with her other than the honorable thing of marriage? No, sir. A pastor who is not the father, he may try to exemplify that he got them type of characteristics. 
but it's not the same as a real daughter and father mm-hmm. because God put fa- the family is the institution that God created that Satan cannot destroy. He's tried everything. He destroyed churches. Churches have been destroyed. You got Mormons and Jehovah. You got all kinds of churches and temples. And he's destroyed those systems and infiltrated those systems. He's trying to destroy husbands and wives and children, but he can't do it because God put a power within husbands and wives that cannot be duplicated. They're trying to duplicate it. And it is procreation. They're trying to duplicate to mess with the DNA and find another way for women to have children without the husband. But to this day, that institution is worldwide and the enemy cannot do nothing with it. And it, and when it's in Christ, it's a powerful thing. So I tell people all the time, if your church ain't family based, based upon husbands and wives with children congregating together, if you know, you're in that local community, you're going to have a problem. If it's all young people in there, problem. If it ain't no old gray haired people in there with wisdom and all that, problem. If it ain't no young people running around trying to use all that energy, pro- you got to have that whole mix of grandparents, great husbands and wives working and children in there. And, and hopefully your mama and daddy, because a daddy ain't playing no games with no man talking about, um, yeah, I'm her past, I'm her covering, I'm her spirit. No, what? Who gonna give her away at that wedding? Oh, for the most part, not not all situations, but the ideal situation is your daddy. God put it together, and man trying to destroy it. He trying to confuse it with this pastor system that came out of nowhere. People say, where did it come from? How did the pastors just jump up and become the leaders of the church, the bishops? How did the bishops become the lead? They are leaders. They're leaders of communities. And they created a system and said, where did it come from? It is a Pope system. And Martin Luther put the 95 Theses on the door and they broke away from it. But soon, guess what started? The Lutheran church. He probably been like, I didn't want y'all to start that. <laughs> but you got a whole know. system. He's like, help, help, help put it together for me. What's, what's, what's your argument here? What argument? That's what uh, Maurice wants to know. I guess because we were, because I asked about the veneration, and then it started going from that to oh. the past. Yeah, I think I think what you were saying is pretty much the same thing. Like, it's okay to honor founders. But yes, it's people, okay it to honor kinda, founders. It kind of steps into like past honor and into more. How like, are you going to honor the founders and not honor Jesus? Now you can do that if you're not about Jesus, but if you're a Christian in there. And you giving up all this crying, oh, the founders, I love them. But you don't have any passion, passion for the founders. And you Christian, where's your passion for Christ? And that should tell you who you are. If you got more passion for the founders than you have for Jesus Christ, you not his, you theirs. And that's the test. That's a big test. You have passion for the shield, passion for the colors, but, and you claiming you Christian. I'm talking about the, when I'm talking, I'm talking about followers of the Messiah, followers of Jesus. I'm not really talking about those who are not in Christ. I was that. I understand that part. I know why you're doing all the things you're doing, but when you come into the knowledge of Christ and you, you receive the circumcision of the heart, he comes in. He says, I stand at the door and knock. Open up. Let him in. When he comes in, you're going to have a passion for the Messiah. You're going to want to lift up the name of Jesus. You're going to do these same things you did for the, the New England Patriots. You're going to do the same thing you did for the uh, football. They're worshiping football. And they can't even t- say that they're, they don't even know that that's worship. But if you're a Christian and you're going nuts at the football game, then when you come into the things of God and it's like, yeah, what time is it? I'm ready to go to the restaurant. Yeah. So where your passion is at is where your worship is at. 
my passion is for Christ. My passion is for the Messiah. My passion is for Jesus because he picked me up, turned me around, and planted my feet on solid. I'm on the rock of salvation. <laughs> Talk to me. Talk to me. 20 years ago in the end. Loving it. So I don't have to preach the gospel to people who knew who I was. All them frat members from Alpha Alpha chapter, um, Gamma Epsilon chapter, Zeta Omicron chapter, Pi Gamma who know me. All the ones who know me from Hampton, Virginia, being in strip clubs, all the people from cross the tracks who knew me from being in that dope house. I don't got to preach no gospel to them. They saw me do a 180 degree turn from a man who was not of God in rebellion and lawlessness to loving. Mm, I love Jesus, man. Well, you you want to you want to know why I say that? You know, yeah, let's talk about it, man. Was in his word. Look, look, in the beginning was the word. The word was in the word. Was God, man? The word is Jesus, man. And I love that just as much as you love the playoffs and the basketball. I played sports. I was a wrestler. I was a fanatic watching the Red. Hated Dallas Cowboys. But guess what? I don't care nothing about none of that. And and I don't mad. I'm not mad that you a super. You know, worshiping the, the you know Denver Bronco. You could do what you want to do. But all I'm saying is, if you in Christ, you better put that stuff in the proper perspective. You see, so your passion, if you in Christ, is to be for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then that Holy Spirit posted and say, the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. And those people at them football games are going nuts. You be like, man, for real? C hey, Facebook will cuss you out. You say something about them cowboys. I mean, cussing. Yeah. So you be like, man, where that passion come from? They possessed. They're possessed. That's a demon. But see, demon scares people. Let's let's give it another name. That's an unclean spirit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a yo, know, we'll, we'll hurt you. Do you see them fights that be happening at them football games and stuff? People so I'm saying if you're gonna fight me, you're gonna fight me over Omega Sci-Fi? You're gonna fight me over Kappa Alpha. Why? Because I said that it's not. Is diametrically opposed to a faith in Jesus Christ. You're going to fight me over it? You ain't going to fight me over that. You ain't going to fight me over it. But if you do, it should tell you who you are. That's your God. That's your God. And you paper members, all you Christians better be paper. You see, when, when I first meet you and you not, and you you be like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I love Jesus. I'm saved. I go to church. I'm, I'm, I am I'm love the Bible. I, I, I say, okay, you you in the front? Yeah, I'm in it. He will say, I said, you know, you play, you play it. I, play. I say, you, you're not paper. No, I'm not paper. Huh? I said, homie, how you not paper and you saved? Because the Bible said thou shalt not lie. Those fraternities are against hazing. So you lying all the time and you not repenting. This is what the rituals mean. When you get in the fraternity and you pay your dues as a Christian, you ha and you underground, I'm talking about the underground mm -hmm. um, guys who are going to make you made. That's his two organizations. You're going to have to lie to your own fraternity. And you're not going to repent because you're going to keep doing it. So it, you could go to after you pledge them boys and get them right and get them good. And you go to church like, Lord, forgive me for beating them up like that and just making them good and making them good cute dogs. Forgive me. I, you know, the next year you're doing the same thing to the next group of members. No, 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 no. You are unrepentant sinner. And if you don't turn from your wicked ways in hell, you'll lift up your eyes. Well, on that note, we're going to highlight joseph's question finally and then we're gonna call it a night y'all because we've been talking mm. for two hours y'all tell That's us good, yeah. tell us in the comments if you enjoyed this um mm -hmm. but joseph says can you also address three of the four omega founders coleman love and just being prince hall what is pha prince hall affiliated affiliate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay oh no nah. i don't know the affiliation. I know Ernest Everett Just, I believe, was a, a Mason and Boulay. As far as the rest of them, I don't have a clue about. But Ernest Everett Just being in the Boulay and Freemasonry is very key because he was a graduate. He was not one of the undergraduate students. So, but you, there's no clue of how the rituals come together. So when you when you talk in the rituals of the fraternity, there's no author of them. It could have been put a little here, a little there. We don't know. Mm. The alphas 
come together um, in a Prince Hall Mason Lodge. The grip was the same as the Masons, then they changed it or whatever. So, but you don't know the specifics about this stuff because history and the well, first of all, it's a secret society. A lot of it is just I made this up right now. Then it becomes the same way as church. We make up some little tradition that's good for the time, and it becomes um, sacred. So this thing we do, it may not be in a ritual, but it becomes sacred. So in the beginning, all of these founders of Alpha Alpha are Masons, but soon it gets lost on who was Masons, who wasn't Masons. But we know Ernest Everett Just was in Sigma Pi Phi, which is the oldest official black fraternity. Um, I think it's 1904 by mm -hmm. William Minton. And they, and they directly, he said he founded his organizations after Skull and Bones. So when you start to under, understand and Phi Beta Kappa, when you start to understand this organization is at the forefront of all these fraternities today. And you say, man, how you in the boule? You at Sigma Pi Phi with that Skull and Bones? And you connect it to Yale University Skull. He want why would he want to patent something after that? And then you say, well, what is the Skull and Bones? Well, whatever it is, I know George Bush and his daddy was on that when George Bush ran for president. He ran against I think a guy named is Terry, Carey. His name was Carey. It's a guy who interviewed them and he questioned them about their membership. Guess what? That man died. A short time after asking them that question. So all I'm saying is that that Illuminati, Ooh. that Skull and Bones and all this stuff, Tony Brown, Mr. Tony Brown, who wrote the book Empower the People, who did the television show Tony Brown Journal, ran for 30 years. Famous. I mean, a vet, he was um, one of my co-workers for a little while. I met this man. But Tony Brown had a video that's not on YouTube no more. He broke down the Illuminati and he said their name is the Brotherhood of Death. The Brotherhood of Satan. So when people started to understand, why would you affiliate your organization with that? And this is a professional fraternity. So you're saying if it's not of God, then those who are in God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob don't need to have nothing to do with it. Get out, run, get away. Submit to look at submit to the will of God, resist the devil, and he will flee. But if you don't resist, trouble, <laughs> trouble, you in trouble because when you start entertaining foolishness, it takes on a world of itself. The Bible says, cast down all imaginations and bring every thought to the captain. That's why, if you got issues. You know, we think crazy thoughts during the day. You see some, you just, oh my God. But if you got them scriptures in you, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God, weapons of a warfare and our of mighty through God to the pulling down the strike. The same way we memorize scripture, you need to memorize a base of scripture so that when these when the battle goes on in your mind, you can bring up them scriptures and fight because people don't understand. That's what the brainwashing of what did we memorize? Greek alphabet, alphabet, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, mm -hmm. like, like, we had to memorize that fast, and then they got us, I don't let it come in, like the people, pull the thing, but that goes, man, one, conquer, so do, so, and they go, faster, 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 you be like, what are they doing? You are being brainwashed, because it said, I am the master of my faith, the captain of my soul, no, you're not, if you're in Christ, he's the captain of your soul, mm -hmm. if you're in the Christ, he's the master of your faith, he is, but if you're the master, now, we can make decisions, left and right. But when you're in Christ, you don't want to lean on your own understanding. You want to lean on him. You want him to direct your path. You're not trying to figure out your own way and do it. You just said, Lord, help me. I got it. You know, saying I need a direction. I need this, this job. Is this job for me? And, and then he give you that answer. However you do it. No. And you walk away or he'd be like, give you that green light. Okay. That's it. Is it her? Is she the one? And he say, no, if you really follow with him, you're going to know. You're going to be like, <clears throat> okay. And that's the decision I had to make. Oh, he want me to marry her? And and I just, the reason why I say her, I just met her. I In, in America, we was, you know, date for a year, meet your mom. You're going to meet my parents. And, and you know, we're going to get to know each other. I didn't know my wife when we got married. But 20 years later, I'm talking to you with 10 kids. Like, yeah, hallelujah, glory to the Lamb of God. 
Ten kids. <laughs> and on the candy cane. <laughs> and this ain't for the Catholics. I love y'all. <laughs> well, I enjoyed this conversation. Donald mm -hmm. Arduin, let's see. No, I don't think that's the question. I think he wanted to know where your YouTube channel is. If y'all want to hear more stories about Brother P's experience in Omega Sci-Fi, and because you interview other like a, two Freemasons before, right? One, and that was Just my last. In a, hey, listen, Masons don't come out on YouTube. Mm. Let them. We um, Fred came out in '95. I came on YouTube in 2009 or 2010. And we sitting here like, man, what kind of mess y'all into where y'all cannot speak? Because I'm not, I don't have that fit. I love the Lord. I know the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. My protector is God. If I'm to be taken out, that's gonna happen. And it's not because I'm like asking people to kill me because I'm talking about no secrets. No, my mission is not denouncing. My mission is salvation. My mission is you to love Jesus. So I'm sitting here like, why y'all scared to talk about you and Christ? You shouldn't have that type of fear. Now, I understand having fear if you got a vendetta against the fraternity and you just, ah, oh, who, who, who riding on the frat? I said, but if you really love Jesus and he's giving you a commission to do this thing, you ought to be able to open your mouth and let the truth fly out. You see? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, 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 I'm at a loss for words at how Man, where them, where the Christian Mace, where the Christian ex Masons at? Where the Christian ex Shrine is at? Now I know where they at, but when I finally got interviewed, and he wasn't Prince Hall, this brother was from the Four Letter Masons, because Black Dick man, they got a bunch of just like you got A M E and C M E, Four Letter Mason, like Fam, it's called A Fam or something like that. But he's from the Four Letter. One calling one bogus, one calling one clandestine. They got all kind of things going on just like church splits you know what i'm saying your ordination is not real because prince hall masons get their um ordination or their stuff from the grand lodge in england so they claim it but this is the oh this is what i meant to tell you about when it comes to masonry this is all stuff from like the grand lodge in england but masonry deeper than that because you're talking egypt you talking osiris isis and horus you're talking about the the what we call Egyptian mythology. You're talking about Kemet. So so blacks getting into this ancestor work ain't nothing new under the sun. The mm -hmm. same stuff we getting into an ancestor worship is the exact same stuff that Pharaoh, that Moses said, Pharaoh, let my people go. It's the same thing. But now we looking at Wakanda as though this is this is our black pride. No, it's not. That's ancestor worship. So when Wakanda when he threw up the skull and bones, you was, oh, God. You didn't know what you was doing, but you throwing up the skull and bones. Well, kind of forever. <laughs> yeah, they got you. So when you took the little drink and he went to the ancestor talking to his daddy, you was, that was the <laughs> ritual. They were showing you this is ancestor worship. We venerate the ancestors. That's what they call it. What well, you mean I you venerate? You going to talk to them dead people? <laughs> uh-uh, don't need -uh, a dead person. Um, it's it's a book by Ricky Jones called Black Haze. I don't know if you've read that one before, but it talks a lot. I about, didn't read that. I know about it. Yeah, it's it's really really good. Um, but it talks about how the rituals are sacrificial and that it does pull from Freemasonry and how Freemasonry pretty much stole that from ancient mystery religions. Um, what have you? But now I've completely lost my thought. I'm so sorry. I think I'm getting tired. I guess that is a sign that I need, <laughs> need to go ahead and call it a night. But Brother P, your channel is Brother P, Brother with an ER, P with no space, right? YouTube.com slash Brother P. Brother P. That's Ooh, it. We the P is for power. <laughs> I, I, I told y'all, I think I meant to say this. Brother P is like that uncle that got all the stories. And you could just listen to him all day long. I'll like, okay, tell me this next one, okay? So if you want to hear more about Greek life from his perspective and listen to his interviews, are you going to do any more of those in the near future or any more talks like that? I know you've been kind of promoting your music lately. Yeah, well, I, I what I did was I left Houston. When I left Houston, I've been in a hotel for f about three and a half, four months. I just got my house keys today. So 
I'm now planted here to do the same thing I did there. So now I'm building my home base to get back, you know, you know, set up your computer and do the thing. But I don't think I'm getting into the interviews. I do this. I'll let people interview me. But I'm through with the me interviewing other people. I'll, I'll, you can interview me. But I'm through it because there's so much tech, you know, to like getting your bandwidth, getting your, your things together. Yeah. I'm through with that. So I'm, I'm like, I like, I like doing it like this, where all of that technical stuff is on you. <laughs> I, I don't, I mean, because you're young, you know what I'm saying? I put that on the young people because uh, yeah. a lot of guys is into vlogging now. It's people don't understand how much work it is yeah. to set up your cameras, like you said, your, your 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 graphics, and read all of the comments and all that stuff. So I like it this way, where I can just sit back, <laughs> relax, and let. I mean, you changed the name; it was Miss Titus to you. That was Miss Titus <laughs> too. You know what I'm saying? But I, I like the name Miss Titus to you, like call me miss don't be calling me by my first name <laughs> but i i like it i like it this way yeah. because i like fred fred is fred don't don't come out to play no more i'm retired i put it the young people i'm not retired from ministry i'm retired i've, I've done it i've i've been on the battle i'm talking about all of this we grounded out the people i was with ain't here no more i'm talking about none of them I started out with like six, seven people, and it's a, it's a um, ex Zeta. Kia Riggins is over there. Kia Riggins got her own. She has a website. Um, who else? And her name is her name is Denounce Some, but it was like Gail Gray was over. They all gone. It was an ex Kappa. How many ex Kappas you know? Not one. One one came out like a, about a year ago. His video was up on YouTube for about a flat month and a half, two months gone. Oh, we got an ex Kappa, M M Tundi. His name is like an African oh, bat ex bass yeah. He is an ex Kappa, but he don't have a be young. Like he's real young. He's the one you but you don't Shahid and Julian. Yeah, he's okay, that's yeah. one. Yeah. So the Kappa's got that thing. I'm telling you, it is a strong hold of you be like, hold up, I know, you know, there's a Kappa who done came out who is filled with the Holy Ghost and willing to share some love with his Kappa brothers, Qs that are still in it. But you'd be like, no iotas. It ain't an iota. That's Centaur. That is straight up the hybrid mess that we be talking about. They be like, man, y'all don't even know what y'all caught up in. But where they at? I know y'all got some Christians up in there. It's fear. Because they done, I'm telling you, every frat in the D, the so-called divine nine prince all basically four let them have denounced but i don't put nothing on you to come out all i'm saying those who really got it got it come on out and show the people there's no fear there's no there's no fight but if you want to fight because i got some ex-members who want to fight mm -hmm. and i don't mean with their hands i'm talking about their mouth <laughs> they want to fight you. I see, I've i seen it. I said, you'll do that for, because I'm in it 20 years. I've seen them come and go. And the ones who just want to fight and argue with people and all that stuff like that, because me and Fred, we, 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 cut, we cut our teeth arguing with, with frat members in, on, on Olympus. And we learned the do's and the don'ts. Like, man, these dudes, is like you said, they venerating it and you're not in it no more. So you got to understand they love that for real. So you got to figure out a way to come at them. And me and Fred came to a conclusion. It's like when we do public speaking, we will never come out with rituals and, and stuff first. We going to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. We going to present our savior first because there's some unbelievers in this thing. And if they hear that first, they might have a come to Jesus moment. But if they're here to do harm and disrupt, the service, they're going to deal with the Holy Spirit because we're going to fill this place with the anointing. You see how when you get up before, I don't know if that's church, but you get up and y'all are singing and praising God. There's a purpose for ushering in the Holy Spirit of God and it's to drive these devils out of here. People who are coming in with ill intentions and we're living in a dangerous time. So me and Fred came quickly to the conclusion Nah, I ain't come. That we used to come to the meetings, biblical perspective of Greek them with ritual books on the table. Boom. And, and Fred called me one time. He said, Man, we man, we got in the food about to get in a fight down there. Savannah State. I was like, fight. 
I said, what was y'all doing? <laughs> they got the ritual on the table. I said, uh-uh, bro. I said, who's you about to fight? It was like Zeus. I said, I know him. Because uh, I was a security guard at Savannah State. I used to lock all the doors. Excuse me. <clears throat> I used to lock all the doors. You can't even cough no more because it's COVID <laughs> season. You know what I'm saying? So I rebuke all y'all people think I got COVID. No, I'm just playing. But I used to lock all the doors. So I, I used to meet Zeus at the gym, and me and him would chop it up. But when Zeus came into that, that meeting, and that atmosphere was the rituals, the this, the that. It's, it's fight season. You come to my conference, you might hear me talking testimony or whatever, but you're going to hear about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and how good his love is, how he delivered me from this. And I love him. He's so good. Let's get into these scriptures. Here's the first scripture. Here's the third. By the time I get to about the, that, that eight, nine, ten scripture, the devils are either running out the back door because some people love their devils. They love, let me use a better word. Some people have fallen in love with their bad things, their bad spirits. They don't even know it's bad. They got foul spirits. They carry with them all the time. I didn't know a lot of stuff I was doing was bad. But my sister, when that man told me the truth, and I bent over and took that license plate off the front of my truck in New York City on Jamaica Avenue, I felt them devils, them foul leave my back. I stood up. I was free. That's how I denounce. It wasn't no paperwork. You could fill out as much paperwork as you can and still go to hell. You understand? This ain't a paperwork thing. Even though I ain't mad at people who do the, you know, the paperwork and get them to send them that. They be hazing. Uh oh, I think we lost them again. I think the audio is gone again. Uh oh, it's gone again. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, I I'm gonna go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and call it a night because I think we lost Brother P. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. I really really enjoyed it. I hope y'all got something out of it. If you wanna, like I said, if you wanna follow Brother P, hear more about Greek life from his perspective. Please look up Brother P with no spaces, just Brother P, and he'll be there. Um. I don't have anything coming up in the near future, but again, thank you guys for hanging out and we're going to go ahead and call it a night. Y'all be blessed. Bye-bye.